Hello and good evening. I'm Gregory. This is Second Sunrise, a production of the Tabletop Galaxy community. And we are thrilled to have you here with us this evening as we get back into our adventure. We play using the Edge of the Empire game system by Fantasy Flight Games. And we're just ecstatic to get back to these characters. And speaking of characters, before I get the show on the road, Let's do a quick intro. As I said, I am Gregory. I will be your space dungeon master for the evening. You can find me online at Gregory Festo on Twitch and 1 in 20 D&D pretty much everywhere else. Uh, how about Corvix93? Who are you? And welcome to the stream. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Son of Clark for all of your Star Wars or the other star show or other nerdy needs. I'm down to talk about anything ever. And I'm playing C0RVX93, otherwise known as Corvix. And he is a droid uh, colonist doctor who uh, is out in the galaxy just trying to sort of find his place and find out who he is. Spectacular. And next, of course, we have Ono Elakemi. Hi, it's me. I'm Niffer. Um, in chat, last HP asked if somebody told us not to say the name of the other star show, and that's me. I said that we weren't allowed to say it. <laughs> I make rules. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm Niffer. I'm playing Ona Elakemi, or Ellie. She's a colonist as well, but she's a politico, and she's also a a uh, force sensitive emergent and that's maybe going to come into play today who knows um something that we didn't really start but we should maybe do is that if you spent xp in between sessions maybe I was say ask what for that you spent it on but you could do okay. it right now go right okay ahead. i sp i bought some force powers cuz i'm gonna, i'm going to be a real jedi just kidding. <laughs> Nobody give this person a lightsaber. <laughs> and what race is Ellie? She's Twi'lek. She's the coolest. How about our droid? What did our droid spend XP on, if anything? Uh, he's saving his XP for something important. I, can I don't know what that is yet. That. My <laughs> default was like, oh, for marriage? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's right. trying to remain pure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. How about we uh, hear from Kane? Who's Kane? Tell us about this character and who are you? Yes, my name is Nick. Uh, you can find me on the tweeters uh, at Lizard King Nick uh, for all kinds of um, content that you probably didn't want to see. So that's that. Uh, and m I'm playing Kane, who is a human hired gun heavy because I updated it this time on my nice. sheet like I was supposed to. Um, and then I did not spend any of my XP. I'm banking it for something exciting. Don't know what yet. Some of those skills are expensive. Yeah, especially so like... the art of YOLO. <laughs> my right? ranged heavy, I've already got four ranks in, so it Ooh, gets expensive nice. to upgrade. Get the talents. It's all about the talent trees. For it's me. true. Anyway, that's just me. That's Zargo. Zargo, yeah. Hey, but uh, one cool thing is you may notice if you look at the stream, I I added the the little chibis for for everyone, so you yes, have they a, look a, so a cute. visual image of what these characters sort of kind of look like. Um, that's Zarko, but that's also me. So like Niffer did an amazing job with those, so I I decided I would leave it there. Uh, well, I, I, well, I was probably pointing off screen. I should say that. <laughs> there we go. That right there. That's me. That's a. Uh, that's our goal. I'm your space GM or something. This is mine. Niffer, you did a really, That's really good right. job That's of correct. capturing Corvix's uh, facial features. Right? Yep. They're fantastic. Got as much humanity in that face hole as I could. And we're going to do some shout outs at the end. But I, before we even get going, I do want to uh, give a quick little shout out, sort of in a roundabout way, to Niffer uh, and also to the Dicey Cantina crew. Uh, Andrew has been doing an amazing job running the Dicey Cantina. And this is one of our sister shows. We're part of the Star Wars. Help me out here, Niff. We're part of the Star, Star Wars, Wars Podcasters Pod Alliance. Thank you. And so. Uh, Dicey Cantina is also part of the uh, group, and they have done an amazing job. And Niffer 
and I were both able to be guests in their podcast, and they just released the second of two, of Niffer's adventures and it's amazing the editing is incredible and her character is fantastic please go check out dicey cantina and all the others there's some really incredible star wars stuff this whole like series is the like avengers infinity war of the star wars rpg shows out there like people from every big show are on there from like Redemption Pod and from Coruscant Nights and from like just there's so many people and it's so good. It super is. So that's my quick shout out to start things off. All right. So we did our clapping. We did our intros. We talked about XP. Now I'm going to get sort of the uncomfortableness out of the way here and I'm going to roll obligation. So uh, let's see what happens when we roll some obligation. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> Ellie, I'm sorry. Why is that always me? <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Now I have to like, by the end of this no. session, I might no, have an fine. idea of how to incorporate. All right. So no, unfortunately. it's fine. I'll just have to go talk to Ulfi and then that will make me stressed. I'm, we'll see. We'll see. I have ideas. Uh, so well, Ellie's Are we allowed to threshold? throw ideas out there? My strain threshold is going down. Kev, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, so remember to bump your strain down by one if you are not Ellie and two if you are Ellie. And Ellie now that that did. nastiness is out of the way, uh, I Darn would it. love for you all to uh, do the fun part, which is to roll <gasps> destiny points. Let's Woo-hoo. see how many light side and how many dark side tokens we have to work with tonight. Who's going to start us off? I'm rolling. Rolling. Let me scroll. Corvix rolled one dark side. Ellie rolled one dark side. Kane wow. rolled one dark side. That's the same thing we uh. did last week. Is it? The uh, totally non-combat gross. start to this session is going to go great, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I will make it not combat. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens. So I get to start with three dark side. Now, th- here's one thing we could consider. Do you all want me to roll? Because there are only four of us. Nah. We can let let it be with We're just the three cowards. player rolls. Or okay, cool. Just wanted to ask. We hadn't really. You'll forget about to that use previously. them anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of games like Dark Souls for a reason. I want you to punish me. <laughs> nice. All right. Believe me, I will be happy to give you light side points quickly. <laughs> Tabletop so. Galaxy, a Dark Souls podcast. <laughs> <laughs> An educational Dark Souls Quick, podcast. Quick, rebrand, rebrand. <laughs> All right. Uh, I um, hope you all have backup characters. Just for yep. funsies, uh, so we would love to ask for you, our f- amazing audience and listeners and viewers and however you do come to find us, uh, we have a funny old ship. It's called the second, well, we renamed it. I think Ellie possibly renamed it the second yes, sunrise. I did. It is an old ship. And it has some funny quirks. And we would love for you to submit your silly quirks. And we would incorporate that into our dice roll table. Uh, what are what are Zarko and Vosk dealing with right now? Ellie, do you want to roll for us and yep. let us know? Yep, I shall. Let's see. Currently. Um. <laughs> oh, they're they're not having a good time because all the lights go off for twenty three seconds. <laughs> okay, so there's there's lots of silly electrical quirks in the ship still that haven't been handled or rerouted correctly, or more likely, they've been rerouted so many times <laughs> throughout the you know centuries or whatever that it's hard to track them down. Uh, and so he, yeah, so they're they're dealing with the lights going on and off constantly while they're trying to do other things, probably, assuming they're back at the ship at this point. Uh, so uh, that's the ship quirk. Okay. All right, so I guess the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to read the crawl text. Okay. And then we're going to have a little bit of a hot start here uh, this evening. So 
Let's see how everything no, we, goes. No, we're not. It's going to be fine. We're going in guns blazing. No, we're not. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Put your guns down. <laughs> All right. So, the galaxy is in turmoil as the Empire grows ever stronger, tightening its grip on the galactic citizenry while the rebellion struggles to grow its numbers and its opposition to the tyrannical rule of the Emperor. On the edge of the Empire, these affairs seem to be the far-off concerns of other citizens. Here on the edge, the concerns are far more personal and immediate. Having just returned after a successful yet troubling mission, the crew of the Second Sunrise finds themselves back in Vicaya on Socorro. The Second Sunrise is damaged and in need of repairs, and the crew has thus gone out to find some funds. Here on the edge, jobs are plentiful, but there's always competition, and you never know when you'll end up on the wrong side of a blaster. As uh, as Kane and Ellie, teaming up with the droid doctor they just met, Corvix-93, have located the crashed pilot and his cargo. Now, as the stars shine above Socorro, the trio face a new threat. So, last time, when we left the crew, they were uh, trying to help Blyn Kempel who is a Lannick pilot, a smuggler, in fact. Blynn is, uh, as a Lannick, he is a diminutive figure. Uh, he, they are only uh, around a meter tall. They are short, pink of skin. They have very large ears, uh, something along the lines of a hobbit with similar ears to Yoda. They're pointy, kind of long ears. Uh, and he's a mess. Corvix has done what he can in the form of triage, uh, successfully healing some of his wounds and uh, actually treating one of his critical wounds and sort of bringing him a little bit back to consciousness. And um, and the, the problem is he's probably paralyzed. He had been pinned down by wreckage from the ship. The ship had smashed into the ground of Cor Socorro, sh shattering the the black, like, obsidian-like dust and dirt uh, and stones of Socorro into the air and slid into a rock face. This sharp, gigantic, boulder-like rock just had split the hull and uh, part of that fell on top of Blin, you with some quick thinking and a flip of a token from the light side uh found that lo and behold on the hover van that you ha or hover truck i should say that you borrowed from uh your friend um drifter well maybe not friend friend might be too generous your uh, your acquaintance uh, fosk's yep friend maybe drifter you borrowed his truck or rented i should say his truck and you found that there were some tools inside including a repulsor uh jack we call it i think so you use that and were able to get the the rock and the the wreckage from the ship off of blin and found that his legs were just trashed he's probably paralyzed Corvix then used his knowledge of uh, triage and medicine that he's been studying and ripped a panel off of the, uh, the inner hull and formed a sort of, um, uh, 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 what's it called? <laughs> a stretcher. Uh, stretcher. Thank you for Blinn. You got him secured on the stretcher. While you were dealing with that, Kane had been searching to try to find the crates that you had originally been tasked with recovering. Uh, with a little bit of help and probably a little bit of reluctance from Blin, he, he told you where to find them in his smuggler's uh, cargo, and you uncovered a four crates originally and then with again a lucky triumph from Corvix discovered that in fact Blin was secreting two more inside of his ship so you have a total of six crates that you have found Kane is has sort of started the process of like pulling them out of pulling them out of these cubbies and maybe stacking them getting ready to bring them to the truck 
just when you were about to move Blin and these cargo crates, you heard a voice from the cargo door at the back of this freighter, this small freighter. And you saw a Ranet bounty hunter, essentially, is what he looks like. Uh, he's sort of casually leaning against the frame of the uh, bay door. And he's got, again, loosely holding a blaster in one hand. And he, he very snidely was saying to you things like, Oh, well, look what we have here. <laughs> it looks like you've done all the work for me already. How convenient. I hate this voice. <laughs> so, perfect. <laughs> Side note, you're popping a little bit to my headphones. I don't know if that's coming across to anyone else. Uh, oh, no. So I, th- I had mentioned that earlier. Um, last HP said that that's not coming through on the stream. So. Oh, good. Good, good. Sorry. Hope it's going to no be worries. all right. I will uh, It'll be fine. try to be Gregory, you're perfect regardless. <laughs> wow, please. <laughs> Far from it. So, um, side he's... note. Yes. I've... I've been talking this whole time about guys put your guns down, no, no, no. And now I'm looking at the player notes and it literally says, Ellie signals Kane to shoot him immediately. So yeah, with, her, with her lucky, you were signaling yeah. her lucky. That's right. So I'm I'm wrong. <laughs> guys, we're we're making this a fight. So <laughs> and uh, as as the scene has been set and we, we get into tonight's episode, Corbix is gonna step in fully between the litter and uh this literally little rat faced person uh, and he's gonna go and who exactly are you with his hand going towards his medical satchel nice so i am gonna so perfect hold that thought uh i'm going to also ask you all we're gonna start off with a roll so everyone go ahead and make a perception check. It's going to be the same um, challenge for all of you. Uh, it's dark, so there's a setback. It is average. Uh, Nick can see the dark. Kane yes, can see Kane the dark, has though. the goggles on. I will allow, even though it's sort of that weird light inside, dark outside, they're scanner goggles. I'm still going to give you the benefit of the tech and say that you, do, uh, you are allowed to uh, remove... A setback so you want to uh You're let's welcome. see how are we going to do that on uh, yours i think you could put a minus one setback for kane okay. and that should balance That's it out cool. when you make the rolls uh so that is again a uh a perception roll and then this everyone uh the the dice pool is set go for it awesome oof oh. oof <laughs> Good. All right, so let's hear it. Well, I got one failure, and I thought that was bad. Then Corvix rolled. Uh, I rolled two failures and an advantage. Spectacular. Kane rolls one success, one threat. Also, he's still got the same... Nope, never mind. I was going to say, is his pool the same, but it's not. It did great. It's perfect. Uh, You have a boost for some reason. I'm not sure why you have a boost. So I think you technically oh, it's still have on. You have two threats. Two threats. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. So let me tell you what happened. So first and foremost, Ellie and Corvix are singly focused on this individual at the cargo bay door. He's like, he's completely uh, captured your attention. Kane, you've got a little uh, sort of battlefield awareness, let's call it. Um you, with your success, you recognize that the Rennet is not alone. Oh. Um, and uh, I'm going to say w- uh, one of the threats is that I want you to um, take, uh, take one strain to start off. The other threat is that you actually hear... From behind the ranet, uh, one of the others, you you hear someone say, uh, "You say, hey boss, it looks like they uh, they got us our own uh, uh, hover truck." <laughs> Congrats, you found a voice I hate even more. <laughs> I shoot that one first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're, I mean. I guess that's good because uh, you're not <laughs> supposed to like these folks, I don't think. Uh, ho- hopefully. 
uh, I mean, plot twist. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, can I make sure he likes us? Can I do something now? Um. <laughs> uh, you don't have any light side points. I can. I can okay. give um, you. One. Uh, actually, no. Nope. I'm Continue going to with give the you narrative. one. I'm going to give you one. No, no. I was no, thinking no, about no, this beforehand. Fine. I wanted to do this. I thought it'd be kind of fun. So I'm going to use a dark side point. Um, one thing you what all do done? notice is, um, the sparks from the sh- the wreckage of the ship have caught part of the ship on fire. And there oh, is no. smoke starting to slowly build up inside this freighter uh, as you. So you're all. So I'm this imagining fine. that Corvix with the the litter, probably Ellie. You all are sort of a midship. The the as the as the freighter hit the ground, it kind of skidded sideways. And so when it hit the rock, it was like the side of the hull that hit the rock. Um, I. Kane was in the cargo bay area. Nice. I love it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Ellie just put up uh, flames in the background and smoke. So perfect on her video. Uh, so Kane, you were in the cargo area, which isn't huge on this ship. It's actually not very small. Think of like, um, think of like a walk-in closet or um, like, a, uh, like, yeah, just like um, an ice uh, what do you call it? Walk in ice, like an ice walk in. You'd have in a restaurant or something like that. It's it's about that a size. Decrease? So let's say like two meters wide, maybe at most, and three meters deep, something along those lines. And I'm picturing the ship way bigger than it is. No, no, no. Yeah. So what I was saying is, if just as a reminder, and for anyone who's just tuning in for tonight, the ship that has crashed is a very small. It's like a one man freighter. So it's very very small cargo freighter. It's let's call it like half the size of the second sunrise. It's um, bigger than a Tesla. We established. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. But not by much. <laughs> Space DM, uh, could I use my? Could Corvix use his advantage that he rolled to be able to get his hand like non-threateningly, like into his satchel where his gun is kept, uh, without really drawing the eye of anybody? Can not, I non-threateningly reach for a like, gun? Well, I mean, like not. He doesn't have his hand on his gun yet, but like, um, I think early in an earlier es- episode, Vosk had mentioned like flipping the clip on his holster to be ready yeah. to draw. Yeah, so he could pull it as an Same incidental. Same situation, yeah. I'm fine with that, yeah. Ready to pull out, um, just not, no hand on the gun or anything yet. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, so the, so the scene is set. Uh, wh- are you, what's what's everyone going to do? The, I, I'm going to say with Kane's, success on his perception check he is also aware of the signal that ellie is sort of giving him yeah so are you acting on that immediately or um so as soon as as soon as kane hears otherwise as soon as kane hears him um he'll immediately like put his hand down on on one of his blasters um and kind of like slowly turn around to look at them um and uh but he'd call out to him before he shoots, for sure. Okay. <laughs> and, and Corvix man. did ask uh, who who they are. Um, he said, "Oh, that's right. Okay, good. Like, let me let me exactly answer are that. You? So he answers uh, by saying, uh, "He says, well, let's just say for the sake of argument, <laughs> I'm an interested party. <laughs> uh, who I am really isn't important at this moment, but, uh, uh, well, perhaps, uh, we can, uh, assist you in, in relieving some of the pressure you're under at the moment, huh? And you hear some chuckles from behind him. I, I'm gonna, at this point, r- try peaceful solutions uh, and just kind of start with a like wait to Kane and then try and use the force please <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I want I would like to control him because that's literally the name of the force power is control so okay. we need to make opposed discipline checks these aren't the crates uh, you're okay. looking for exactly okay. I, uh, so it's an opposed check Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so uh, let me... Let's remind each other. And by that, I mean you remind me how opposed checks work. Uh, I believe you are going to be rolling your... Uh, what's what's the check for? What is it's it? It's a discipline. Discipline. Opposed discipline. Yeah. So we're both going to be rolling discipline. And okay. I believe the higher outcome is the winner, is the way I All understand right. opposed checks. Here goes. So let me get our... Hey, team. What do we think is this worth using a light side point on? Yes. To, to boost. Because I can <laughs> maybe get him to be on our side and then for five minutes. So we can maybe be advantageous. You got to use um, those light side points to be a Jedi. No. Okay. Maybe. You don't know. <laughs> Discipline uh, is based on what? Discipline is based on willpower. Thank you. Okay. So he is untrained. This is going to be interesting. Um, yes. So. Uh, All right. I'm, I'm going to flip this light side point. And I'm also going to flip a dark side. Why would you do this? To, <laughs> um, let's see, to uh, give him a raise. Great. I want to raise. Uh, so I'm gonna use dark side. So you yeah. you use the light side so you can use the force power, and I'm using okay. a light side to give him a raise on his roll. Um, so I think we're set here. Let let's see what happens. Let's go. Let's try it out. And see what happens. We'll figure this out. I'm waiting for you to roll. Sure. Here you go. You roll first. Two oh, success. No. Oh. Two successes and four advantage. Oh, he, that's not right because he shouldn't have any difficulty. I don't know why I that know. happened, and he didn't upgrade, and his role wasn't upgrade. I need to. Sorry. Why would you do this? I didn't thing? do that right. I upgraded on the wrong side. You got let, my hopes let me, up. Let me fix that. Let me re-roll why would you that. Do this to me. Sorry, I made a mistake. Here why would we you go. Do that? Two success anyway. <laughs> didn't change the role. So, um. So, two success versus two success. I am going to say that it's probably I, a push, right? A wash? What are you thinking? Eh? What do you mean? Well, like, does that count as tied? Is what you're saying? I'm feeling like it is because of the successes, but you have four advantage. And I'm thinking, like, you can use those advantage for whatever you want. Maybe I'm wrong. So uh, I'm I'm looking up contesteds right now. Thank you. Because we are an educational podcast. Well, I'm just so new to the system. I, I don't have all the rules down like a master that I should. Yep. That's why we're all helping each other. Opposed checks. Page 24. Page 24 of the Edge of the Empire core rulebook system <laughs> by Fantasy Flight Games. States. Yes. <laughs> states. <laughs> Hang on, I'm almost there. Flipping, sure. flipping, flipping. That's a weird thing for the book to state. Hang on. <laughs> <clears throat> Oppose checks. Uh, add. Um, Oppose checks. Add. Th um purple dice and potentially red dice to the skill checks dice pool similar to standard checks however rather than assigning a general difficulty level to an opposed check a quick comparison between the active and opposing characteristics and skill ratings determine the difficulty of an opposed check oh so, so the, i did that wrong so okay we yes so, so let's the redo active it characters dice pool starts out using the same rules as building a basic dice pool using green and potentially upgrading some into nice. yellow based on characteristics then introduces I cannot remember the purple and red based on relevant characteristics and skill ratings. The opposition's higher value between its characteristic and skill determines how many uh, purple dice are added to the pool. Well, lo the lower value indicates how many of those dice are upgraded into red. So you said that he wasn't trained, which means it will just be purples. Uh, but I upgraded, so it's going to be one purple, one red. Okay. One purple, one red. And so it's are you set adding that to my desk? I I'll take i take care of it. It's ready for okay. you when you are. Okay. I have, I still have the, Do you I have the boost, right? What's the Using boost from? 
the boost is from flipping the light side? Or is that an upgrade instead no, of a boost? I th the way I understood force powers is you just have to flip it to use it. Is that wrong? No. So the power that I'm using requires that I make a check and then I use the force dice. So the check needs to succeed before I can use the force dice. Got it. So then, no, it would just upgrade yours. So it would turn one of your so greens to a yellow. So one upgrade. Yeah, not a it doesn't add a boost. It, flipping Kay. a light side point will never add a boost or take away a uh, setback. Okay. It's, it's only going to adjust the Good green deal. or yellow. Okay. Now we all know. Okay. We a figured it out. Hooray. Discipline check. Here it goes. Okay. Well, okay. So Well, I rolled I rolled my force dice with that apparently on accident. That's okay. Oh well. That's okay. What did you get? I got two successes and one threat. And I don't know what the dark side point means, so you got to tell me that's, how that works. That's for later. Okay. So, you succeed in so what you were trying to do is essentially stop him is my I understand. Can you my force power I can use a force point either positive or negative to um, generate emotions and to get him to be influenced and believe uh, something that I tell him or to adopt an emotional state okay okay so you're influencing his emotions how do you want to do yes. that what, what's the influence you're looking for so, because it's a dark side, there's a special rule note that only dark side can be used to generate negative emotions, such as rage, fear, and hatred, and only pos light side may be used to generate positive emotions, such as peace, tranquility, and friendliness. So, I think that I want to try and tell him that the boxes are empty we just got through them and they're empty and he's disappointed and like he believes that they're empty and he's sad about that okay uh okay certainly so, so it this whole operation was a bust yeah i got it okay perfect for everyone involved um so uh so yeah do you want to tell us specifically what you say to him? I, 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 I get the idea, yeah. but let's yeah. have some uh, so, words. <laughs> make me say that all in a British accent. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to just kind of be like, wait, and like hold out a hand to Kane and just turn to him and be like, if you're booking for anything from this, you're not going to get it. We've already been here and we've already picked over everything and nothing is here. It's just this poor useless person and you're not going to get anything here I'm sorry I just try and influence him with the force yeah and so so there's this kind of moment where he's he looks a little confused or unsure and, and he kind of like uh, wait a minute what do you, what, do you, what do you mean there's there's nothing here. We're, the crates are right there on the floor. Yes, and they're empty, unfortunately. It seems like you and I weren't the only ones to get the idea of coming by a completely scrapped and on fire wreckage. Neither of us were first. <laughs> Sorry, uh, friend. Well, hmm. And the, you, you hear, so uh, there's like this kind of like... Uh, Grumble from the the crew, the group of them is like, uh, uh, that's not good. And uh, he's like, wow, huh? Well, I guess we have a dilemma. <laughs> uh, I, I came out here to uh, to make some money, and uh, the way I see it is, uh, we only have one option if that's the case. Uh, First and foremost, I don't trust you, so if you'd be so kind, um, please carry the crates out. And at this point, he's like, he's pulled his blaster out and he's pointing at, he's pointing it at you since you're the one that was addressing him. 
uh, he's like, um, why don't you bring those crates out here and show me? Pro- prove it. Ah, prove it. He's supposed to believe this. He's supposed to believe? Okay. Yeah. That's why I used the force. Fair. All right. Well, he's... Uh, fair. So let me correct that. So he doesn't ask you to bring the crates out. He says he okay. wants you to step out. He's like, um, why don't you step out and we'll we'll see what kind of an arrangement we can come to. Um... I came out here for uh for um some uh weapons and armor in and, and uh well you don't look like you got any armor but you are armed and uh we got this great truck out here. So maybe we could come to an arrangement. I will step out with him. I'm not armed though. Okay. Corvix will as Corvix Ellie, might be <laughs> as uh Ellie goes to step past Corvix cuz they're carrying the litter together. Yeah. He will just like gently place a hand on her shoulder and just say, was... "Don't." Sure. May we get our friend out, perhaps? He shrugs. And I'm gonna like motion to the sick person. I would like to maybe carry him away from the flames so that you know he might be the only person of value left. If we maybe bring him back, there's something in there. For you, if you want to take him. Well, look, it's already a loss for me. I don't care what you do with the pilot. I didn't come here for the pilot. I came here for the cargo crates, and I don't even get to end up with that. What are we supposed it's to do? Insane. What do you mean, boss? There's no weapons? Corvix is going to attempt to exchange a pointed look with Kane. <laughs> there's uh, From there's what also eyes? One. he's confused. <laughs> you see it. At this point, you see that behind him there is an Aqualish and also a Chiss female. Uh, so the Aqualish is um, s- sort of the the they, they kind of almost look like walrus looking guys. It's the dude who in yeah. uh, episode four lost the arm, right? Kind of furry, yes. but they also sort of have like a weird walrusy butt looking chins. face. The yeah, the two just, bulbous just say it. kind just of say butt chins. Yes, that's it. <laughs> they, they and have the butt uh, chins. The yep, Chiss is. is a blue-skinned uh, alien. She has, like, black long hair. She's kind of wearing a bandana. The Aqualish has, like, this kind of, like, something like somewhere between a cargo vest and, like, a life jacket-looking thing. It's it's this kind of, like, poofy uh, yes. vest on. Uh, heavy, just, like, looks like they're yeah. wearing essentially heavy clothing or some kind of a armor. Classic they have Star some, Wars look. Yeah. yeah, they have some gear on, and they they each have a blaster. Uh, the Chiss woman basically says, ah, "I don't get it. What does this mean, Sharness? We're not going to get paid." She's addressing the uh, the rat. Uh, rat uh, what's it called? <laughs> the rat. rat. Just call him the rat. The rat. The ratan. The rat. Ranit. 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 Uh, so. He's like, yeah, I don't know what, how did we must have been given bum information, or maybe, I don't. He looks confused. He he's like, he doesn't understand what just happened, but he he's like disappointed. He's like, pissed Good. off and disappointed because of it, but he doesn't understand. He's like trying to parse what just happened or why why he came all the way out here for nothing essentially which because ellie basically convinced him there's nothing here (laughs) nothing of value here uh so um yeah so that's what's happening with him but they're all three they're kind of like you know they're pointing guns at the group of you and and backing away down the he's backing down the ramp and that's when you Mm -hmm. see that there's these other two with him there's more okay um i'm gonna try and also share a pointed look with uh Corvix because Corvix just told me not to go okay so I guess less of a pointed look and more of a questioning look of like what do you want me to do (laughs) Corvix just doesn't know what's going on exactly and he's ready to blast his way out of here if necessary okay but let's get to higher ground first is what I'm trying to do I'm trying to set us up more advantageously for when we shoot them he he doesn't understand why this uh why they have this cargo clearly like 
right there mm-hmm. in the cargo bay, and you just told this guy that we didn't have anything, and he believed you. Corvix is like, nice. what is going on? <laughs> the power it. of the force. And I'm going to um, say, too, you, you... So Blin actually, as quietly as he can, sort of looks up to you two and whispers. He's like... He, he's got his... Bla- he's still holding oh yeah, his blaster. Yeah, he has a blaster, does he? Yeah, sort of limply or whatever, but he's like... He's like, I may be injured, but uh, I'm still a pretty good shot. He did shoot just, Kane's blaster out of his hand last session, just right. to point out. Uh-huh. Just to say, just to, he's sort of, uh, you can probably imagine, he's just saying he'll follow your lead, essentially. Before I head out, is, is, um... Blin in a position where he could shoot outdoors. Like if I try and position the enemies around me, can they all just like firing squad as soon as I get them into an advantageous position? Uh, Corvus uh, is currently maybe? standing between Blin and the mercenaries. Yeah, so but the way I could I'm kind of in... sidestep. We yeah, so Whatever. with so here's what I'm imagining. So in our last session. You rolled triumphs for creating the stretcher in the first place. So my thought is the piece of the hull that you decide... Again, he's not a huge dude, right? So you only needed this small, smallish piece of metal, maybe a meter and yeah. a half long or something. And what I'm imagining is like you you literally found like the perfect piece of metal from this ship. It literally mm-hmm. has like like slots that you can use for handholds or something like this. Perfect. So, so I'm sort of imagining that... Uh, that Corvix very like cautiously took a step or two towards the front and is still holding, like maybe is holding the stretcher behind him or something like this. Perfect. Um, And Ellie is sort of a little off to the side. Maybe you guys are like canted at a little bit of an angle with, uh, with Ellie the deepest into the ship, uh, Kane the closest to the cargo bay door and then Corvix just behind Kane. Cool. Um. But yeah, I'm gonna. Is it, is it possible? Would it be possible to sneak back out that way I came in, like off to the side? That like. Part no, that's... definitely not. Uh, you okay. ripped your shirt getting in. How are you gonna sneak? Yeah, the Ranit is Which... like literally like three meters from you. He he's okay. in he's he's not engaged, but he's still within close range. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah. other two are going to be, uh, let's say, let's call it medium range. Cool. They're, I guess they're, I that uh, Kane went full Captain Kirk and ripped his shirt on the way in. <laughs> yeah, audience, you need to remember. Yes, Kane, currently, Kane so is, this, is bare yeah. chest right now. Maybe a little scratch <laughs> just to show that he's a tough guy. And yeah. you said you <laughs> took your coat off. So I'm going to say you off. don't have your, uh, your heavy coat on. I'm imagining he took it off shoulder. outside, <laughs> maybe passed it to one of you or something. But there oh, has no, he does not let us touch the jacket. Fair, please. that is it a is, special is cool jacket. jacket. All right, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave us this job? It came from her. <laughs> oh, oh. <Is> he? <laughs> yes, that, th- that's right. In the chat, one crit wonder is reminding us that Vosk was shirtless first. So. <laughs> But yeah. how many abs does Vosk have is the real <laughs> like, question. Like 12. He's a Duras. Yeah, uh, that's he's, true. A, he's a mechanic. <laughs> he could either be, you know, a big old, you know, uh, port, portly guy, or he could be like one of those super fit, like, you know, can oh, lift an engine block. he's definitely the super fit one. Yeah. That's, I'm thinking Obviously. more that way. Look, Vosk has to live long enough and be fit enough <laughs> to be the eye patch Duros from Squadrons. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. remember that when we got our art, the first comment was, oh, no, they're all hot. So <laughs> that's right. So, so anyways, all right, I, so back to the story. Am I, <laughs> am I, side, side note. No, um, am I still holding the end of the stretcher or have I put it down? You tell me. Kay. I was thinking you had lifted him up together, maybe. Yep. Yes. Th- or in that we, case, okay, we could say so. Corv, you both said you wanted to take a step toward the Ranit, uh, a, like a sort of a cautious step. So we could say that it's the stretcher still functionally on the floor of the cargo bay. 
Okay. Um, and you have essentially taken a half step forward. So yeah. if that's how you prefer it, or you could have it yeah. between you. It's either I way mean, is fine. If, if we had been holding it, I was going to drag my end into the most advantageous position, setting right. Glenn up to take a shot. But if that's asking too much, then I just leave it and I just kind of slowly walk away. Right. Um, so I, w- I would make the case that uh, for Blinn's comfortability, he would be transported feet first. So he is, uh, Corvix would have been in the front leading as the doctor. So Ellie would have set down his end from behind, giving Blinn a head to the back, feet towards the enemy angle to shoot these people. I am okay <laughs> with that. What a good doctor. Spinning off way into the weeds on the details here, but that's you're doing what the we're best doing. for your patients. Right. We're setting the scene. Every, we're, Look, <laughs> I was a I was a medical transport for a while at a hospital. I know how these things kind of go. That's yeah, sort of. true. Clearly, I'm with you. Sort of. So, all right. So, so. I will leave uh, Blin's head and just kind of like do a like it's okay nod at. Uh, Corvix because he doesn't know the signal and then I'm going to just kind of say to the Renat like after you and motion outside so that Oh he's already walked back he, down. Yeah. He okay, already cool. walked back down said, the uh gangplank. Which yeah. and again it's just a short, you know again yeah. like it, as high as this cargo bay is, the it, that's as long as the ramp is. So it's yeah. it's only like two meters, two and a half meters long maybe. Mm-hmm. Um Actually, it's probably a little more than that. It's probably more like three meters okay. long. So he's at the bottom of the ramp, let's call it. Yeah. Uh, Kane is essentially like, you know, just a vi- very little bit inside, maybe a meter inside yeah. the door. Yeah. But they can I'm all gonna, see you. I'm, I'm going to walk out very intentionally to the side. Okay. And the my like who are behind me so they can't see the tips giving the fire at will to Cade. Uh, I like it. I like to have a picture that we're doing the uh, Return of the Jedi where they're on the sail barge and everyone's nodding at each other and there's a little yep. horn a little horn yep. every time they nod except um. it's, it's Ellie's <laughs> like you on the back yep. it's like brown. <laughs> yep. So a L- little bit that I'm just trying to set the scene. Yeah totally. All right so so again, the Rana is at the bottom of this um, uh, ramp. He's almost not paying attention to you at this point. He is still, but he's also doing that co- kind of like nervous pacing of like he's trying to figure out what what happened, like how this job, this simple job, just went sideways before it uh-huh. even started. How did that happen? He's sort of trying to figure that out. The the Chiss woman. Just ask him, like, what does this mean? We're not going to get paid. But she's mm-hmm. definitely, like, got a bead on one of you. The Aqualish, Aqualish similarly is, like, his point. His blasts are at you all. So um, yep. so you all are slowly walking forward. Yeah. Um, I want to get to, like, the edge. Kay. Like, the, the, like, seam of where the door goes yeah, down. The door? And, like, the, okay. Yeah. So, like, sort of, like, one foot on the ramp as I've given the you should do that now. So you're going to move in front of Corvix and Kane? Past them. Or yes, alongside like, them, maybe? Yeah. Just so that I don't get shot when they all shoot, but also, like, try and give the other team a false sense of security that I'm going with their plan. Okay. Can can I, uh, can Corvix carefully, like, that gun. lower that gun. the stretcher <laughs> to the floor... Um, while keeping his hand near where uh, his blaster is kept in the satchel. Well, I think we said that the stretcher is on the floor. I think we said the stretcher. You were just about to, like you had just loaded him up and got him comfortable and and strapped in onto this this makeshift It makes sense that I wouldn't be holding his feet up in the air. You're not holding him (laughs) Right. So you're not actually holding the stretcher at this point. You're literally, you literally were just about to exit when this dude showed up. So you all sort of probably stood up, turned around to look at who this speaker was. And that's where we like started the session. So at this point you can easily just walk forward without having to worry about that. Uh, Corvix will just prepare to step out of Blinn's way. Okay. Good idea. 
Excellent. So what's Kane been doing all this time? He's sort of, uh, he was in the front of the group and. Any time yeah, has just Kane, been signaled to you. Yeah, Kane spends a lot of time uh, evaluating situations and figuring out what the most advantageous both uh, way to attack and the optimal time to attack is. Nice. So um, ha- having listened to the whole spat, seeing the thing, um, he's kind of going to put his hands up a bit uh, and start start kind of slowly taking a few steps towards him. Hey, look, look, friend. Here's the thing. Like, it's late and I'm tired. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to have to do this. You don't want to have to do this. It's going to turn into a whole thing. Maybe you kill us, but I guarantee we get some shots off. You're going to be injured. We're going to be injured. And, and like, every sort of, like, point I make, you know, I kind of take, like, a, another step, like, closing the gap a little bit, but not in an sure. obvious I mean, as not obvious as you can make a right. confrontation. <laughs> He's like, look, man, I'm just, I'm tired and I don't have the time for this right now. Is there something we can do that doesn't involve, you know, 50% of us being shot right now? Nice. Uh, I want to have a charming role from uh, Kane. That's, uh... So... <laughs> I set you up to take shots, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh... <laughs> uh He's trying to get I can, I can roll charm, but, like, let me just tell you that, that charming is not my... I fully intend on fighting this dude. We so, can tell oh, yeah. Charming was a uh, thing charming. when we met your ex girl <laughs> so, so I could roll Charm, but I'm just trying to kind of get close enough to uh, to take a run and kick that gun out of his hand. Ooh, <laughs> Interesting. Nice. With my coordination <laughs> skill, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I See, it. I was angling for I'm on the edge of the ship, which means I can pull the pipe down and do the whole like spray exhaust at him thing to get the <laughs> gun out of his crazy. hands. I love this. <laughs> But this, this is, is gonna get I like nuts. This. Should we just go ahead and roll an issue? It sounds yeah! like we want it to all just like pop off. We so. want to fight. I, I <laughs> do so, want to fight. Corvix loves. I will fight. say we this. We want to fight. All right, good stuff. I will say this just because I think Kane set it up to be a a good point for him to respond. So he would say, "Yes." He's like, uh, he he sort of. He sort of comes out of his, I'm going to say the effect of the force maybe wore off at this point where he sort of like comes out of the like little stupor he was in. Um, you're still a, a couple meters away. Like he would not let you get right next to him, obviously. Um, right. So let's say you're at the top of the ramp or maybe a, a step or two down the ramp at the most. Um, and you you kind of say this to him and he he sort of pauses where he's, like pacing nervously or whatever. And he, and he looks at you again, he's got his blaster in hand. He looks at you and he basically, he says to you, he says to you, he go, goes, um, and he kind of like twists his, his whisker again. He's like, uh, Oh, are you, are you proposing a deal? It seems right. like we've got the upper hand still. Uh, I don't know about okay, that. Okay, but if you look, the up the high ground is ours. Right. <laughs> you, well, uh, it, it's a hot you're... deal. It's coming at you fast. <laughs> so, with him saying that, what what's the trigger? Here? What are we just? Do y'all want to roll initiative? Because it sounds like y'all are itching for a fight. So I'm good with Let's that. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. All right, here <laughs> we go. It's Kevin, on. Kevin, and Corvix wants to see Kane mow down a lot of people at once. Yeah, same. <laughs> right. I don't know. These so, are minions. <laughs> so I, so I will say this. Uh, you're. I'm gonna call this a vigilance, not cool, because you're in the heat of it, right? Even though you sort of know it's gonna happen, it's. You, you, I, I don't literally say said, "Kane, shoot now." How am What's, I not prepared? Eh. Um, I. As a player, I would make the argument that Kane could do cool, but since Ellie and Corvix are okay. waiting for Kane to go, yeah, we would be valid. vigilant. Uh, My I'm skills valid. that is very valid. I will accept that. So Blynn, Ellie, and um, and Corvix are gonna roll vigilance, and then uh, Kane will roll cool, Mine and I'm gonna have the enemy roll way. vigilance as well, <laughs> since y'all are gonna try to take the. Uh, Jump I could have had four green if I was cool, but I'm not cool. <laughs> Oops, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait. I need to empty my entire pool. There we go. That'd be cool. So I he's all right. So he's roll rolling. Uh, wait, let me make sure the dice pool is cleared because it should be clear. So don't roll anything yet. No, uh, no worries. All right, it is set. So you can do your thing whenever you want. 
So, and I got a bunch of rolls I got to make. So there's one. Oh, wait, I didn't open the tracker. Dang it. I stink. Oh, let me uh bummer. let me clear this. Remove all. Clear. Uh we'll, I will add to I will add them in after the fact to make it easier here. Uh, all right, so you go ahead. If you have already done it, just uh, I will let me know. So who rolled? Okay, so Corvix. Uh, Corvix right, rolled two successes on his vigilance check. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Okay, Corvix, uh, add turn. Oh, I don't need. That should be. It's it's just PC. I don't know how to do this. Let's do. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, PC. Here also. we go. PC. Add. Uh, Ellie's in there, it looks like. Kane's in there. Okay, um, good. I we haven't rolled Blint. yet. But I just rolled. So Blynn is technically an NPC, but because he's on your side, I'm going to roll him as a PC so it's easier for us to track. But he's going to act on his own on your turn. You guys can decide when he wants when he's going to act. Yay. So he got, what did he get? Threadplin. Blin got one and two. One and two. Uh, okay, so that's the PCs. We're missing one PC slot, and that would be, let's see. So Corvix got uh, two and zero, and zero and two, and three and one. Beautiful. Okay, so all the PCs are set. Let me now take care of the NPCs. Uh, so we okay. No, he's dead. Let me get him out of the way. So this is PC one. We got vigilance. You're lucky because they're very good with their cool. So uh, I'm being very <laughs> kind. <laughs> you were not prepared. <laughs> and then we got. Uh, oops, that's not what I need. I, I need got that. three successes and one advantage. Surprisingly, I need one. Two of those. Okay. Oh, look. They're only apprentice bounty hunters. How hard can they be? You don't know that. Can't get them. <laughs> All right. So uh, here we go. Let me uh, let me do some stuff here. According to the NPC sheet, Sharnus's last name is Reedgeet, and I love that. <laughs> Almost as much as I hate his voice. <laughs> yes, his his voice is... just perfectly conveys the fact that he's constantly rubbing his hands together. <laughs> exactly. I want to shoot this guy um, right in his face. And I think we get to do that soon. All right. So PC gets to go first with three and one. So I imagine big Kane is gun, going to gun, gun. start us off. Um so th <laughs> there's uh let's see how many I'm going to uh flip another dark side point here. Why? And um the the chiss woman says uh as as you sort of have come forward a little bit to the edge of the um the cargo bay, uh the chiss woman uh says Hey, boss, I think I recognize that one. There's a bounty really? out for her. Really? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm not internationally famous. Why do people keep recognizing whose me? Whose obligation came up today, Ellie? <laughs> 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 so with that, <laughs> um, Kate, I, so I think you're taking the first PC slot. Is that what we hear? Yeah. So as, as she says that, I imagine that... Uh, that uh, Sharnis kind of turns to look at her for a second and then back at Ellie, and that's like my moment to strike. Uh, so to Kane runs like, towards him with like Naruto level speed, uh, just sort of like kind of darting. Uh, and I'm gonna. Behind him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I want to try to kick the gun out of his hand. Wow. Okay. So that's interesting. So you're gonna use a maneuver to engage. Yep. And I suppose how are we going to do this? Um it sounds like you're going to be making um like a melee, melee. attack yeah, brawn yeah, or me I'm, tr I'm trying to think what uh what seems more reasonable in this case. They're the same, so whatever you want. <laughs> Let's call it melee cuz you're getting into Uh combat. no, I'm sorry. 
I think it is brawl. I think brawls like yeah. fists and 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 yeah. kicking and oh yeah, because you're like not actually using a weapon. Let's do it that yeah, way. Yeah, so you're gonna yeah, make a brawl. Yeah. Uh, you're you're in. Devs. You are in uh, engaged. So melee average, right? Uh, he is. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, nemesis, I think, is what they're called. No, no, he's not a nemesis. He is a an uh, what's the other term? A rival. So, uh, if I understand this right, you're gonna bu- it bumps the challenge by one. So you'll have one purple, one red. I cannot wait for the moment when we have to melee fight Ristol Sant because Gregory's gonna be like, "Now, Kane, you and Ristol are engaged," and I can be like, "No, they broke up." <laughs> Does does Kane All cock right. his arms like Henry Cavill from Mission Impossible? <laughs> <laughs> that is you, low key. That is one of my favorite moments of that entire trailer. Yeah, like that part where he's just like, and that entire trailer. Okay, I'm gonna get distracted for like two seconds. That is one of the most brilliant trailers. Whatever you think about the movie is fine, but that is one of the most brilliant trailers. Like that entire thing is cut to that music. And it is super dope. One of my favorite Tabletop trailers. Tabletop Galaxy, of all time. a fanboy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm gonna kick him in the face now. <laughs> yeah. Well, not the face. I'm gonna kick his hand. I'm gonna kick that gun out of his hand. Kick him in the gun. Kick him in the gun. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, all right. All so. Oh no. <laughs> so Kane. Why would you do this? Kane rolled Our a failure. Our first despair. <laughs> a failure. The first de- this is the first despair we've had on our show, y'all. Uh, failure, so, three advantage, and a despair. Yeah. Nick, your rolls were bad three, la- last time. Three, they were supposed to be better this time. This Ooh. is why you only use your big gun and don't try and do anything else. I mean, I thought it was a cool maneuver. So, it was pretty cool. Uh, I did, too. <laughs> I, I, uh, it's all right. I should have given you a you boost cool. for the cool factor. Keep, remind me Wouldn't for stuff helped. like that in the future um uh so uh if it's cool i got an idea here for this despair thing let's hear it trip um (laughs) yeah basically so i'm thinking like so is the other the doopy guy i can't remember any i'm so bad with the aqualish yes the the, the aqualish is he standing is he standing right there too no the aqualish and the chiss are both at sort of medium range so they're like they're a good five or ten paces away from you Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, uh, I'm thinking I go to do the kick. Uh, you know, I, I run up as she's like, Hey, I recognize that one. And he like turns back around, looks at Ellie, like quickly sees me out of the corner of his eye. And like, as I go to kick, he moves just out of the way. Um, and then basically I trip, uh, and am prone. Uh, you run up and you, you go to kick and like the banana peel slip (laughs) sound effect happens. (laughs) He just goes down on his back. It's I like the it. full Slide, slides across kick. the like leaving a cane trail in the sand. You like uh, Charlie it, Brown just like kicking at the uh, <laughs> football. Love it's it. The, it's the Luke Skywalker kick in Return of the Jedi where he just like high kicks the sky, <laughs> does not impact at all. <laughs> yeah. kick. Get off Luke's back. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure it was. <laughs> all right. That's where Yoda case, goes. I'm going to force kick for my move. <laughs> I'm kidding. Use how how would you like to use the advantage? You have three of them. Um, I would like to pass a boost to the next person. Okay, uh, that's one. And then I'm also going to pass a boost to... Who Who do we think is going next? It's not going to be um, me. I don't have a gun. Probably Corvix, since out of the What's three the of Corvix? us, there's only two of us that shoot okay, things. I'm- Oh hey, yeah, I'll pass a. Blin is gonna shoot. I'll pass a boost That's to Blin and Corvix. So one for Corvix going next, and then two to Blin, as I caused yeah. this distraction. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> okay. All right. So you pass one specifically to Blin and one to whoever goes next. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So, fantastic. Uh, on. Oh, I'm missing. Am I missing one? I am. There should be one more NPC slot. More Did NPC? I do this wrong? Two. We're oh, I see why it oh, was right? one. So there should be one additional NPC at um, two zero. Let, let me add. Oh no, wait. That's in there. NPC two zero uh, zero two. You got three NPCs and four PCs, right? Oh no. 
No, you no there's them? only two NPCs for some reason. Uh, oh, there should be a, an NPC at one and two. Okay, here we go. Let me let me fix that. Uh, and I'm glad I caught that because what's going to happen? Because right, so we wouldn't now. want them to not have a turn. Um, this this may sound uh, ignorant, but what are the ratio numbers? What does that mean on the turn order for roll twenty? That's oh, good advantages, question. Advantages or that's successes and then advantages. Oh, right? okay. And this is how we figure out who's going in which order. Yeah. So, um, so three to one means three ad- three success, one advantage. And the advantage uh, is like the tiebreaker, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so on two and zero, both an NPC and a PC go at the same time. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. So, I am going to say that uh, Blynn is going to act first because he's the leader. Um let uh, I'll give the PCs the benefit of the doubt. You you guys can move first, and then I'll tell you what Blynn is gonna. Sorry, not Blynn. I am uh, Sharnus, the uh, bounty hunter. Um, so if the PCs go- get to go first, Corvix is going to step to the side to give Blynn that clear shot, and he's gonna whip his blaster out and try to impress Kane. <laughs> okay. He doesn't want Kane to know he's trying to impress him, but he's he is trying to show that he can pull his own weight in a firefight. So maneuver to move mm-hmm. to an advantage advantageous position uh we said incidental to pull your blaster because you were sort of prepared for it i used my advantage or my boost earlier to do to set that right. up right uh do you want to use do you want to spend strain to aim take the extra maneuver to aim or are you going to take a shot no. and and is corvix going next was that the idea then to set yes, up I, I will Corvix will take that PC slot and okay. um Perfect. I don't know that I can afford the strain to aim. His strain is pretty high at the moment. Okay, doke. Um because I haven't reset anything since our we haven't been able to rest or anything since our previous session, so I'm still right. at like six out of ten with the reduced strain threshold. Okay, what's your target? Um, I'm gonna shoot at Ratman. Okay. So the bounty hunter Batman. is again he is a rival uh and it is dark out so uh but you know what I'm going to say he's enough in the light. I'm not going to give you the hindrance the setback for it being dark at the moment. Although there is smoke in coming out from I'm giving you a setback. You guys have light side points if you want you can use them. So you have one setback, one uh challenge and one Oh, oh gosh, I forget the purple and red. I got a too. boost from Kane. You did get a boost. So you add, remember you add the positive dice. So you right. have one boost from that. Uh, um that. the dice pool is set when you're ready. Okay. I greatly enjoy listening to you talk yourself into all of these things. I'm just Sorry. like well, mm, uh, yeah, I'm is that. shooting. Um he got a total of one success. Hey, that hey. is a hit. So um, what's the so- damage? Let's see. Let's go to his. Uh, oh, geez. I don't know where I've got this stuff set up. Is he, you should is have a macro for your weapon. Yeah. And y- if you click the weapon, it'll just do the whole thing. It'll do the so whole, instead yeah. of just hitting I did, I did ranged not light. Click their, their weapon, I clicked the skill. Yeah. You, you should click That's okay. the weapon. We can figure it out. So, what's the base damage? Um, he just has a light, uh, I believe a light blaster pistol. Um, I'm showing my unfamiliarity with the character sheet. Just give me just one second to look around. It should be under the combat tab. Yep. Under weapons. It was set up, I believe, so... Not there skills combat. combat. There you um, go. So you have a GL yeah, yeah. seventy seven so, light blaster. Um, so five damage. So yes. plus the one from the success. So you do six damage to him. Uh, he is wearing some armor, so he's gonna soak some of that. Um, and he, you can see uh, as the as the blaster bolts hiss him in the shoulder. Uh, there's like this sizzling. Pss- pss- he's, ah! 
and uh, actually, I'm going to say you hit him in the arm. He sort of, as Kane came down and sort of tried to tackle him, he turned to the side. So you you get him in the shoulder, like out on the outside of his shoulder. Uh, he he does take a little bit of damage from that. Um, and uh, and that's going to be it for Corvix, right? I believe. Yes, uh, that is all Corvix is doing. All right, so that was the PC. At the same moment, the and he he's going to act basically at the same moment. So at the same moment, this bounty hunter came came tried to tackle him. He looks at you, goes, well, "That was a dumb move," and he's going to pull his blaster and try to shoot Kane. Now you are prone and you're engaged. So uh, I come at me. Am. <laughs> Uh, not 100% sure how that works. So um, help me out here if I make any mistakes. Uh, you're, you're in close range, essentially, but you're not... Well, it is... It's short range. Uh, but you're... Functionally, you're kind of engaged. You're basically at his feet. So I'm going to call that engaged. Uh... He's going ranged light, so it's going to be average because you're engaged. And I think that's all. I'm um, looking up prone because I think a, that might affect he gets some a, things. Yeah, he gets a boost. He gets a boost because you're prone? I yep. thought that was only I'm for looking. melee attacks. I'm looking. Th- melee it might actually brawl. be a setback. I'm looking. Sorry, folks. We're learning. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> setback. Thank you, Kit Rhodes. I appreciate that. I thought th- I thought that's what it was, but I couldn't remember. That's why we love our chat. And so one yeah. setback, one. Uh, all right. So he's got a setback. Uh, it is average. Uh, that's it for him. Uh, so he is going to make his, uh, and uh, he is shooting with a disruptor pistol, which yeah. this could be bad. Uh, so here, I think that's it. So Kane, he misses. So here's what happens, Kane. You take a dive as you go by him. Th- you uh, at the same time that he pulls his or he points his blaster over at you, just when he's about to take the shot, he, uh, another blaster bolt ricochets out and hits him in the shoulder, uh, failing or fouling his aim. So there's this so- shot that just right next to your head um and uh the he's got four advantages so um he is going to pass on let's see what's he gonna do he's like um he's gonna say out loud he says you idiots you think i'm dumb we've got you surrounded and then he's gonna pass on a boost to his companions uh actually two of his companions so uh uh yeah so stuff happens and uh i kind of feel like i kind of feel like two of those should be a setback on kane uh yeah that's fair i like yeah. that that's great so that was, take i mean it's still pretty terrifying and like he's it in kind of a pretty not great predicament here <laughs> i appreciate that so setback to you and uh boost to his companion so um that was PC and PC. We are back to the same thing. PC and NPC acting at the same time. Blin, so go. I'm going to give the P- the Blin as you want. You want Blin to act next. Okay. So Blin is going to act act next. He has a boost, uh, and his dice pool is um, he is now at medium range. Uh, and this is again a rival, and he's gonna. Ha- I'm gonna give him an extra setback because he's injured. Uh, so this is gonna be a challenging shot for him. Um, aside from that, I think he is good to go. Uh, so he is going to shoot with his blaster pistol. Oh no, two failures, two success. So, um, so his shot misses again in that he can't get quite the right angle. Uh, it actually hits the, the deck plating. So it's like uh, in his weakened state, he's, he's trying to, you know, not hit Ellie, not hit Corvix, not hit Kane, but hit the, uh, 
the bounty hunter and he, he's just off so it just goes into the uh deck plating um and i'm thinking uh the two uh I think he's going to use one of those advantages to actually help himself out with some strain because he's in a bad way still. Uh, and then um, and then the next person will get a boost. So he's uh, that shot sort of like startles the uh, the the adversaries. They were not expecting <laughs> the shot from inside of the cargo bay. Uh at the same moment, the two um, minions that are uh, these two bounty hunters that are helping him, the Aqualish and the Chiss, are both, they're going to shoot. Now, this is where I get real confused. So, I, again, I apologize. I'm still learning. This is only my third session. So, um, when minions are shooting, there are two of them in the group. How do I do this correctly? I bump the, the I know this is terrible. Who who let me run this game? <laughs> well, um did Seal tried to explain minions to me once and it's kind of complicated. <laughs> I, yeah. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Uh I don't know about like um if they add more to their I think they just roll like the base uh person maybe. Um but they they all attack the same target, uh, and I know that literally like, as cannot hear me. Uh oh, that's not good. Um, um my mic as, is queued up, and it looks like it's going well. Is anyone else in the chat having trouble? He built it as a minion. Uh, it is built as a minion sheet, and then I think I can bump the number of minions somehow. I don't know. Um. um I found the section and I am. Yes, the minion group size. I got it. It's set. Okay, I think it's ready. So I think I can just roll it. But let me make sure I got the dice pool set correctly. They are at uh, they are at medium range. They are going to have a setback because it is dark, um, and uh, they are who they're going to shoot at. They're not going to shoot at Kane because they they were aiming at the others on the group. So essentially this is going to be at uh Kane and Ellie. Uh so let's let's Bring just it. see what happens. Um sorry, not Kane and Ellie, Corvix and Ellie. Um, Destroy me. Yes, Bring I it. got it. I got it. zero wounds That's so awesome. far. But just come do at me. tell me if anyone else can hear. If anyone else is having trouble in chat, let me know if you don't hear. Well, they're not going to hear me. So uh so anyone else, if you can't hear Gregory, I was gonna look something up and now Please I can't. Let us know. Okay, I, I think yeah. I have it set. So I'm gonna just roll and see what happens. Let's let's just do oh, it this I'm way. So the dice pool's ready. Uh and we have this guy here. These are the yeah. Let's see what happens. Ha! With the blaster pistol. Okay, they hit. Now we gotta figure out who they hit and how much okay, they do eight damage. Uh um, I'll take it. <laughs> They do have two threats. Um, so uh, that's, I'm going to say, oh, they were supposed to, oh, they, they only had one setback. Okay, wait, that's right. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to add a setback to their boss's next roll. They are, uh, sort of shooting past him and it's like he feels like he's in the middle of the crossfire or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh so now now I gotta decide who's gonna get the shot. So I'm gonna roll Can I volunteer? Okay. Ellie was out front. Sweet. Corvix tried to get out of the way. He maneuvered uh to the side. Ellie cool. you get shot for eight damage plus So you know, you have... I get shot for six because I have soak. Nice. Fantastic, and thank you I for being soak. generous. Volunteering? For volunteering, yep. Uh, we're going to start making sound, but he's quarter of the volume niffer, so we can't hear him. Oh, interesting. You've okay. had issues with your own volume before. Well, let me turn up a little. I'll turn less. it up a little, see if this helps. Um, there, I boosted it, so hopefully that helps the stream. And in mm -hmm. the meantime, oh, we lost Kev. Kev, where's your where's your camera? 
We're losing the stream. Pull it together. He's, pro he's protesting me getting shot. I guess so. All right, so that was PC NPC. You're oh also no, Nick is Corvix. Yeah, now you're on the gonna stream. have to fix. The I know. I know. Well, when he comes hopefully back. we'll get him back. You know what, folks? I think this is a. Th I don't want to <laughs> do this, but because we're having technical difficulties, let's take a quick intermission. We'll try to pull Yay. things together and come back in the middle of combat here, uh, and, and see if we can't get things back in order. Uh, so please stand by. Thank you for being <laughs> patient with me as I bumble my way through this. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we got it back together here. We fixed our tech stuff, and now we're we're back on track. And I figured I did make a mistake. We have corrected things. They should have had one yellow die in their role for the minions, but that's okay. I made the mistake. We're going to let it stand as it is. Ellie took uh, eight damage, but she soaked two, so she took six wounds. And we're good to go. We're going to move on to our next uh, in the turn order here. So... Next in the order is, again, the same thing, a tie. NPC, NPC, tie. I am giving you all the benefit of the doubt and letting the PCs go first. So this is the last PC turn of this uh, adventure. Oh, it's so me. I'm the last it is PC. Yeah. You're about what to you blast do? everybody. What's Ellie doing? I don't have a gun, so no, I'm not going to blast everybody. You, you got a blaster. At, uh, you had a blaster before. Yeah, D I figured you... that we. I didn't take it with the medical crew did i i don't know maybe i had a thought though of like since kane clearly failed on like incapacitating these people is there a conduit i can yank down and aim <laughs> some exhaust and stuff i uh, would flip a light side for it yeah i'm i there is enough wreckage on the ship if you want to do something bizarre like that we, we, sure why not we'll do all the i could like the engines are in the, let's say, on the side. So there's probably some kind of hosing or, you know, tubing or something that you can maybe yeah. try to do it. I can either, like, I'm aiming to either, like, obscure their view or to, like, stagger and knock them or, like, cause strain or something. Huh. I don't know that you could. They're not close that or enough, I, stab I think, them. that you could do that. I would. Definitely obscure their view to like give them a real hard time to shoot at you all. That sort of, I could see that being an option. I think, but I mean, other thing too is I think Ellie has a blaster. Like we okay. established that way back, like you, the first session or something you didn't, or you something yeah. happened with it. No, but then I I know that I possess one and I own one. I just okay. am not sure like would I have it like in this circumstance like how you said that kane isn't wearing his jacket etc so well I, that was specifically because he took it off when he was climbing through the okay. crack to get into the ship last time yeah hey so Gregory. i'm gonna leave it up to you but i would think that ellie has a blaster with her at all times um we, kevin and nick are switched apparently. yeah we, we have a technical issue on, on the stream, stream. corvix is suddenly hot says <laughs> one crew under. Okay. Oh, I switched it and then it switched back. So that's what happened. So bear with me, folks. Thanks for pointing that out. I can fix that real quick. Thank you, one crew under. We love you. Also, who strolls around in the outer rim without a without packing a little bit of heat? Yeah, I, the I one think... who has never shot anyone in her life. But that is false. Time? Ellie you take that back. The one yes, time I tried small. to shoot somebody, he had plot armor, so I didn't even get it. I sure. feel like uh -huh. Ellie coming from the Black Sun as like her family would be like guns are everyday part of life. Like I don't leave home trained. without it. G definitely guns are oh, everyday part of life. Now we got life. people in the right spot. Thank you for letting us know. I I switched the cameras and then it got flip flopped again in Zoom. So yeah. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, it's backing the Anyways. way it should be. Space magic. So I, I, Ellie has her blaster with her. All right, there fine. You so you can decide. I'm still cool with you using light side point to do some cool thing to make smoke jet out of the back of this Look, damaged. Look, it's cinematic, spirit. yo. It's way more cool. So 
If that's what you want to do, go for it. I mean, also, here's... Mm, guys, what do I do? Do I shoot him? Yes. Okay. Shoot his face off. Uh, I will do that. Because you told me in such a nice ASMR voice, I will shoot his face off. <laughs> just just picture that voice and him going... <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. Oh. All right. So oh, Ellie has a boost. Okay. He is a rival. Uh, medium range, so you're at uh, I have one, medium range. One purple, one red. Uh, dice pool is set. You're Part of me go. still wants to flip it just because I'm so You did add a boost, spite. right? You did add a boost? Blue boost. Add a boost, cool. It's ready when you are. Hey, look at that! I got a Ciao. success, which means I did were you, seven damage. Were you shooting at the bounty hunter or the minions? I was shouting at the bounty hunter because I hate his voice. Right. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. So Ellie, in all of the chaos and confusion, slips her blaster off her hip with her maneuver, <laughs> takes her shot, and is successful. That is seven damage. Yes. Uh, and you have two advantages, which is not enough to critically hit. Uh, what would you and like bummer. to do with your advantages? I would like to pass a boost to whoever's next. Um, or, <clears throat> the bounty hunter is looking pretty injured at this point. He's got one bad Let injury in his arm. Me. I'm going to say Ellie shot him in the back because <laughs> he was facing away from you at this point. That is, that's on brand. <laughs> okay. I will also remind you as the DM, I used a dark side force to uh, use those feelings, which can be open to interpretation or yeah. uh, the story. He's injured and darker. angry, and Ellie is in a bad no, mood. <laughs> Ellie used the dark force. Yeah. Heads up. Yeah, so, I'm with you yeah. 100%. Love it. So mm -hmm. um, what do you want to do with your two advantage? Do you I, have any ideas? Or? Can, I, can I pass a boost? Please? And you can recover strain. You can do yep. one, the other, I, or both. I will pass one on because I think Kane's going to go next and he needs it. Okay. Kane, uh, are you going next? Sure. Cool. Passing, so he passed a boost to the next in line and then recover one yes. strain. Yes. Awesome. Love it. Because, right. hey, if I'm going to be shot half to death in one go, I might as well not be stressed about it. Oh, the audio... Rip. Do I have audio? Oh, goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. Am I that? I'm sorry, folks. We're, we're no getting worries. it together. Here we go. Thank you we're for the feedback. We're all still learning. I did not mm -hmm. mean to do that. I think that was definitely my fault. So, sorry. I apologize. That should clear it up now. I think I fixed it. This is cool. why we are doing this and recording backups and all that good this stuff. This is the, why we the love The podcast is going to be... Uh, <laughs> this is what <laughs> makes us stuff. relatable as streamers. Right? Um, you know, all uh, give me all of the technical difficulties. I'll take it. All right, here we go. So Someday uh, we're gonna this is the out. last NPC round of this first combat round. First, sorry, last NPC turn of this first combat round. And cool. here's what happens. Um, there is one shot that comes through the cockpit, and oh, there is uh, standing up on top of the ship is a – so the third of these individuals that you did not know, a third minion, shoots through the window of the cockpit because the window had basically slid off and was crashed to the ground mm -hmm. and was mm -hmm. therefore open. And then uh, there's another one that now is basically standing above direct, <sighs> almost directly above Ellie, but up on the top of the ship and uh, is going to shoot point down at Kane. Uh, oh, this and take, is a TPK. Uh, take a, this a group of bounty hunters is our next group of PCs. We're just going to be them. TPK. TPK. Um, we're going to be the next owners of the second sunrise because we're going to play these guys. <laughs> what does it mean to be alive? Doesn't matter. Corvix is about to die. Uh, there is some chaos happening at the moment. I am giving them a couple setbacks uh, because of the 
motion and movement between Kane and Sharnis, I, they uh, they're gonna have a hard time taking the shot. I definitely uh, should have made that fog cloud, y'all. I would like to take this opportunity to point out to my uh, party members that Corbix actually does not have any armor at all whatsoever. Oh boy, that uh-huh. could be bad. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh no, that's eight and a threat to Kane. <gasps> Oh no! Um, so it's I'm fine. gonna He's say been worse. the threat is um, they nearly hit Charnis, and I'm gonna give him a second setback for whatever he does next. Um, how's Kane doing over there? He's fine. Okay, good. Yeah, this I know is you Kane. have quite it's a fine. lot, uh, but I just I'm I'm worried for you, my man. I don't. I don't <laughs> Yikes. Okay, um that should have been Actually, you know what? I said that was oh. going to be shooting through the window. I feel like that should be at Corvix. I I I made a mistake cuz I didn't want that to be at Kane. Uh You only said that because he said he didn't I, have armor. But it's all good. That's okay. Uh it was my mistake. So Kane, you take the damage. Uh I just dr- help I got to keep myself honest here. I meant to shoot at K- uh Corvix. So you said that's probably what's going to happen next round. That's okay. Be All right, yeah, we got through that jumble confused. of a mess of a route. I we're back at the top. Kane, you're on the ground. You're injured, and uh, Sharnis is like disheveled. It, he feels like things are falling apart, even though his minions seem to have it more together than he does at this point <laughs> for some reason. Um, uh, he he's still. He's not really lording over you at this point because he's been shot twice. So he's kind of like, uh, you know, he's like shaking a little. Uh, it's almost like these uh, minions. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's almost like the minions are all vying for his position or something at this point. Okay. Um, so, Kane, you have a boost. Yes. What would you like to do? Create a power vacuum. Get you're them all on our side. You're currently prone on the ground. So. Yep. I'm going to just, like, roll over with my rifle pointed at him. Uh, and I'm going to take a shot. Yes. You have a boost. I got the got the boost. You got the setbacks. Uh, say that. Oh, uh, hold that thought. I see what he's saying. Range light. That needs to go like that. Thank you for the tips. One Kurt Wonder, I appreciate that. Uh, we love you, our let me, producer. Let me uh, set the... Um, I see what I did wrong. Okay, so let me set the uh, dice pool for you. What are you going to do now? Tell me again. He's shooting. I'm going to shoot him. Okay, you're going to shoot the bounty hunter. Try to t- end yep. him. Okay. Yep. Uh, you are prone. Uh, he is... You're engaged... Uh, so you're shooting, um, did I, you said you're going to take a setback because of, uh, yeah. what happened last uh, time. I have two uh, now, right? You gave me one, one for something else, didn't you? I think you just gave me one for the threat. Maybe. Uh, that was for, uh, that Sharnis. was for the bad guy. Not yeah. for oh, you. sweet. Okay. I was saying that was for Sharnis. So just the um, one. So yeah, I think. Uh, that, that was for the bounty hunter. So yeah, you're you're set. You have one one setback, and then he is one red, one purple because he bumps one because he is a rival. All right, so uh, it is good to go. I'm also gonna flip a light side point. Yeah, good buddy. Idea. You gotta uh, get a shot in sometime. For my cool guy one liner that he's gonna <laughs> sling at him. Yes, <laughs> give it, do it. This is what uh, we're all here for. It. Sweet. Okay, and then I got one upgrade. And Kane's going to take a... One upgrade, one boost. Yep, yep, I got it. Yep, I got the boost. All right. Kane's going to take his shot. Oh! (laughs) And he gets... Oh, tell us what you got. Kane gets one success, one advantage, and two triumphs. And as he aims to shoot, he says, If I were you, I wouldn't have missed. And then he fires. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's so good. Got the one-liners. That's what we're all here for. All right. So As he just like rolls this. over in the sand. <laughs> this this perfect moment of um so so 
I'm going to say that Kane, you're the only one that sees this because <laughs> uh, this this Rattan bounty hunter is a, is basically right above you, looking down at you. He's been shot in the arm. He's been shot in the back. He's c- sort of teetering forward as you look up in at him and say that to him. You just see his eyes get like three times larger as he opens them wide, and then you, how do you how do you end him? He just just like he just like goes flying, kind of leaving his feet standing, you know. <laughs> nice. So you just uh, shoot him center mass, just like you were trained, perfectly, you know, almost from the hip on the ground. You're perfectly braced, and th- yeah, there's this moment of this like. And everybody else, especially um, the ones that are like in the ship or on the ship, all you see is like his arms go, you know, arms and head get jerked forward. His chest goes shooting backwards. And then there's this moment where he's almost hanging in the air. This the the the, like time slows for a moment. The the camera angle just catches it perfectly. And then there's (laughs) this whoop as he hits the ground uh, in the dirt. And this this kind of like black dust of Socorro uh, goes up around him. The other four, uh, these apprentice bounty hunters, sort of like they all kind of look around at each other like, "Uh uh-oh. In fact, you probably even hear one of them say, "Uh uh-oh. And just (laughs) so you know, there are the um, the bounty hunter on top of the ship is a human. Kane, you can see him at this point. And the one that shot through the the uh, pilot, sorry, through the cockpit is a, a droid. So uh, they oh, no. are all still in it, but we are down one NPC slot here. So um, droids are the worst. That's going to get interesting. Um, and then I... W- and then I got two triumphs to deal with here. Yeah, so that's use, that's what we have to deal with next. <laughs> use your triumphs to pull a gallon. How much damage you hit ranged heavy like, two instead of your blaster as oh, well? Oh, I so did. I don't yeah, know. No. I do How a much? base. I do a base nine. I think so ten damage. Yeah, he can't yeah. soak yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and Use was your already triumphs wounded, to pull a so. gallivant and just look at the rest of the bounty hunters and say, I suggest you fall <laughs> and just intimidate them into, into passing out. All right. Yeah, so for so the- you have two triumphs. I want something super cool from these two triumphs. You Now, you haven't taken a maneuver yet, so I'd love to see Kane get to his feet after yeah. that. <laughs> yep. Yep. With like as the dust settling. So like yeah. all all that you see is just like this explosion and like this dust flies and as the cloud starts to dissipate it's just like Kane slowly standing up to his feet. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion for one of the triumphs to kind yeah, of stick yeah. with Niffer's theme? Yeah. I'd love for the shot to actually like pass through the ranet and hit something on the ship that then there is this like as like some <laughs> pressure release kind of like it clouds uh, clouds Ellie and Corvix a little bit in some some steam. If yes. I had hair, it would be like blown back, yes. and I'd be like. <sighs> uh, Kane stands yep. up, doing like the flash dance, but it sparks right. from the ship above coming down. <laughs> you you, um, you super impress these. Can uh, you, can you do a cool check for us and see how good it is? <laughs> so. Uh, yes, Gregory, to that suggestion, except it's not an accident and it's not a ricochet. Fair. Uh, as Kane stands up, he pulls the holdout blaster and like shoots, <laughs> oh, causing like better. causing, uh, you know, causing the, the steam to go and, and give <laughs> them some it. cover. Uh, and it. then I'm going to turn to the Chiss. Um, where is I think I just saw I can force them to drop a ranged weapon. It's wielding. Yeah. So I'm just going to oh. look at, I'm going to intimidate her, look at her and just say, and you're next. Um, hey, something I learned in my very first time playing this game was that minions don't have strain. So if you intimidate them, they take damage. Mm. I don't know if it's really uh, intimidating, but. Uh, that's pretty intimidating, <laughs> my dude. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Wait, hold on. It's forced the target to drop. Yeah, the, the target. Dead. I was about yeah, to yeah, say yeah, it, but yeah. you got to me. Yeah, you got yeah. it to me. I can't read. It's fine. You got to it before me. Literacy, guys. It's all Top good. five skill. <laughs> the, we pay you to lead, not to read. It's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> exactly. It's a great idea. So, 
something else though. You still so yeah yeah yeah. Let's see. Any what other suggestions? Um, I'll probably do the same thing. I'll just look at her and say you're next. Um, and I'll add a setback uh to her next check. So there, uh, that minion group. So there's two groups, two and two. Um, they they're sort of working together. So whichever one the chiss is in. Yeah, that group will definitely have. So the the chiss. Uh, looks at you. And she's a little wide-eyed too. She looks over to the Aqual- uh, uh, Aqualish and is like, like they're both sort of looking at each other. Like, oh, oh no, what do we do now? Um, so that's awesome. What an amazing turn that was. Fantastic. That was a good redemption arc right there from your terrible trip from the past two episodes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and. Uh, so now we're going to do, okay. There's a PC and NPC that are tied. So what, what's, what's next? PC first. I'm, I'm letting the PC go first. Um, if there's not a whole lot else going on to really shake things up, Corvix will, um, take a shot at the Aqualish and the Chiss are both available. Like, or actually now, you said that I just got shot at through the, uh, Cockpit, From right? Behind. Cockpit. Yeah. Um, then he would probably. So what? Ha- so I, the damage went to Kane, but functionally, what happened is there was a shot that came through the pi- from from the uh, cockpit and like went over your shoulder, maybe. And then there was another shot that came from the top of the ship down at Kane, and and that's the one that hit. Cinema. Oh, so that's. So Corvix didn't take damage from that. You didn't uh, take damage from it. It's oh, okay, just okay. like. You know that there's you know that there's a threat behind you. Then Corvix, having seen uh, the Rotan or whatever that Renat. race was called, the Renat, I Renat. got the confidence Sorry, backwards. Let's just um, make it yeah. sound so terrible, Renat. <laughs> the the Ratata uh, got <laughs> yeah, the Ratata. blasted into the darkness. Um, Corvix will pirouette on the ball of his robotic foot. <laughs> And blast nice. towards the cockpit. Yes, uh, that's um, that's fantastic. And there's so you just see this this droid. He's basically got his arm extended through the cockpit. You know the windshield of the cockpit, which is now slid off and like in pieces on the ground. Uh, Again, maybe. and so you take your shot. Go for it. Uh, nice. Wait, I gotta set the pool. Hold on. Let me make sure it's correct. Um, I it is medium range. Uh, oh no, I almost feel like it's close range. No, yeah, it's gonna be close range. You guys are close enough. I think that he's gonna be close range for you. So we're gonna uh, work on you deciding in one take. Sorry, <laughs> instead of that, no. I eh. I gotta think about it. A few meters. So that. Yeah, yep. they're they're short range for sure. Yep. Okay. Craw- yeah, they're just up at the front of the cockpit. You're still inside the cargo bay, so go for it. All it's right. Ready I'm gonna. It. I think I'm gonna click on the right button to send an error 404 that droid's way. Nice. Um, Spectacular. Uh, boom. There we go. So it's saying two successes, um, with a base damage of five. Ciao. Yep. So that is seven damage, and uh, they have they do have soak. They are they are armored. Uh, so this Must one nice. takes some damage. Uh, uh, as you blast it in the face or something or in the arm. <sighs> Uh, okay, so it was just too success. There's nothing else on that roll, so that was an easy one for Corvix. You didn't maneuver. Do you want to move, or are you just going to stay where you are? Um, is there, is you're there in, a place? You're in a pretty good position because, you know, you're sort of safer for the moment. Um, I know that, uh, like, the door of the cargo bay is just, like, wide open, but is there a place that I could sort of take cover as far as this... Um, the droid shooting through the cockpit. Definitely. Is. Definitely. Because um, remember, you guys had the wreckage that was sort of like imposed into the interior of the ship. And mm-hmm. you had lifted some of it off 
of uh, Blinn and sort of out of the way. So there's there's like there's cargo crates, there's rocks and there's hull pieces and there's all kinds of stuff that you can definitely maneuver to take cover. OK, uh, yeah, since I, since Corvix just shot at that uh, droid at the cockpit, um, he will definitely maneuver into a covered position facing that assailant. I know that there's two more sort of to the rear, um, but he will get covered from the uh, the cockpit direction. Yeah, narratively, that's cool, too, because it's kind of like you're covering Blinn, which I love. Um, all right, super. So that was PC. So NPC at the same. So um, all right, who, which group I have? I'm going to have him shoot back at you basically at the same time. So he, you turn, you fire. He's firing simultaneously uh, just to see if they can hit you. Uh, but technically, Corvix this shot first. includes the... Hu- What's that? I said, but Corvix shot first. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say the human essentially on top is also going to like shoot inside because now he realizes there are threat like he already knew that you were in there but he's gonna like sort of like reach down and try to uh, so that's just I'm part like of this on attack. the line of inside and outside so yeah, exactly see me the so, best. i'm um, just volunteering to get shot i don't know why all right so let's I'm see if this works either. so this is for against corvix hopefully this works let me see if this goes it's because he hey there doctor. you go all right so corvix gets hit for oh they should were they supposed to have a setback? No. No, they didn't have a setback. Sorry. All right, the next group has a setback. So um, so that's just one success, which means seven damage. Uh, but you said you don't have any armor on at this point, huh? I do not have any armor. Ouch. Okay, so Corvus takes seven damage. That's a mighty yep. hit. Heard that. All right. Um, next. He probably has a AP. smoldering, uh, like, blast oh, no. crater, like, in his yeah. left shoulder. Just oh, no. <laughs> yep. So, uh, PC slot, um, what do you want to do? Can I shoot at the guy on the roof? Yeah, you can, or Blin can take a shot at the droid either way. I don't think way. that Blin can get to the roof. And if I take one more hit, I'm down, so... Mm-hmm. So it's all up to Kane. Kane, exactly. you got to <laughs> No pressure. You all have... St- so, okay, so let's step back a second. You all do have stim packs, so you can always... Apply a stim pack to yourself, right? I can't. Fair. Kane and Ellie can apply stim packs to themselves. Is um, that a maneuver or an action? I. That's a good question. I was. I think it's a maneuver, if I recall. That would be really nice. We but also have uh, I will light side points. You also have light we side points. Do. So that's what I'm trying, trying to say. There's lots of options. Um, I love the idea of Ellie taking a shot. So you said that. Why don't you go for it? You know he's cool. right above you. Uh, you do. saw him sort of reach his arm down. Even though there's a little bit of steam and smoke, um, yeah. you know he's up there. I it's will fine. give you one setback, mm-hmm. but it's close range, a short yep. range. So it's, you're, not, you're not engaged. So it's yep. uh, one black, one purple. It cool. is ready to go. Cool. I'm not afraid. I know how to shoot a gun. <laughs> I literally oh, got nothing. At it all. was a wash. I Ugh. I don't know. It's anything, better than any setbacks. Apparently. It is better than setbacks. Um all right, so the next up is NPC. So this is the group outside with Kane. Um, um, can I maneuver yes. though? Either to take a stim pack as yes, a maneuver, I apologize. If we know what it is, absolutely. Uh, or I want to not be in range. <laughs> I want to hide. Find yes. some cover to take. Yeah, that I want to find cover. And take it. And grab it. Grab that cover. Um, are you looking or am I for if? Taking a I was is... looking, but if you can find it, that would be great. Um, okay. But um, for now, I'm going to say yes. I just think it makes sense and is cool if you do. Um, Lit. So Stim application. Go for it. One sec to sim. Indexes are the best, everyone. That's right. Oh, here. Uh, um... Shoot, I don't see it. Okay, so 
you look for that. But for the moment, I think yep. you can. If you can, we'll let it happen. I will have done as it, if it did because it just repairs five. Fabulous. Straight. Uh, um, in health. the meantime, NPCs. So the NPCs outside with Kane. Um, they're um. They're in. They're in a moment right now. Um, the chis, the chis, seems to be the most together of this group after their leader, and she looks at you, it Kane. You're sort of like, it is a maneuver. It takes a maneuver. Perfect. All right. So automatically Ellie, heal five wounds. Nice, Ellie. So I'm pulls still standing pack. in view of the guy on the roof, but I look cooler. You do. You're also. Uh, in the steam, they're like there's the steam vent that's kind of like going. Ooh, so there's you're obscured so I partially. Really look cool. You do. Um. So this Fan chiss, go. <laughs> the the chiss looks over at the aqualish and looks back at Kane. It's sort of this almost like a Mexican standoff with the three of you, almost but not quite. Um. So the, they're you're all pointing guns at each other, and uh, she says. She says, uh, maybe we could come to an arrangement. If, uh, if you give us the girl, we can, uh, we'll let you live. <laughs> uh, how she, about a, how about a counter arrangement? How about, uh, you leave and I won't drop the rest of you. Awesome. Um, Oh gosh, how do we I do swoon. roll negotiation? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm feel like it's an opposed like check or something. Um, Free action to swoon. <laughs> I mean, I'm swooning for Kane. I don't know if yeah. that helps the situation at all. <laughs> right? but. So they would just make a willpower check because they're not. Uh, they don't have. Uh, negotiation. <laughs> um, Perfect. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Bold of you to assume he knows how to talk to people. Uh, uh, so, goodness gracious. How did we do opposed checks again? Let's see. Um, so she's going to have a setback. And she, and it's... No, it goes on your, to me, right? Yeah, what's your... Uh, <laughs> what's your cool... It's too green. Too green. Oh, I thought you were cooler than that. Dang it. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm the cool one. How do you? That's okay. right. I know I'm you the are. cool one. Presents. Uh, okay. That's what Ellie thinks. I think I've got this set right. I don't For know. Green, Let's just see what happens. Much. Let's just see cool what happens. One. Yeah. Hey, uh, okay. Corvix has two yellows in cool. So. Ooh. They, oh, wait, why was that upgrade? That's not right. Oh, because I have, oh, that's silly. I did that wrong. I'm going to reroll okay. that, y'all. I made a mistakey. That's all right. I forgive you. Um, Here we go. Okay, now the base will set correctly. Cool. Um, well, I like the first one better. Ooh, I like the first roll better, <laughs> I, too. Yeah, I agree. I also I like the first one. <laughs> we just voted. All right, I like fine. We'll do what we've done in the past, <laughs> like which is just to do better. the math. Uh, so the first one would have been one success if I take out the second, th or no, one advantage rather, one threat. So let's do. Let's see, one threat. It'd be less. Two threats left would have been. Would still be. So it would have been one threat instead of two. Yep. Um. And it would have been one success because there would have been one less failure. So it would have been one sex, one success, one threat, which is better than four success and two threat. Um, <laughs> so, but th essentially, she, th you're at a standstill. They're not acting this turn. That's what happens. They're not going to back down from what you just said, but they're not going to act at the same. They're not going to shoot at you yet. That's what happens on their turn. It is the last turn of this round, and it is a PC turn. I think Blin. Is Blin has not one, acted, right? so he can yeah, take Blin. a shot at the droid. All right. Uh, the droid is close range. He has a setback because he's on the ground because he's injured. 
Actually, I think I was giving him two setbacks because he's not doing so great. Uh, so, Blin kind of coughs and looks at looks at Corvix, looks at the droid in the front, and he and he he says to Corvix, he says, <clears throat> "Not all droids are made equal," and he takes his shot. <laughs> Or hey, created. Man, I, I screwed that up. He would have said created equal. Oh. Okay, he misses, but he gets one advantage. Um so he's going to I, th I think that could be a threat to the droid, right? Uh, I mean, sorry, uh uh what's it called? Uh setback. Can one advantage I got where's my chart? I'm oh, I need all the, the charts. Notes. I think that is. I can to check one. if you want. I am looking. Threads. Here we go. Pulling up the chart. I believe it can be used for. No, you need two to add thread. Okay, so then in that case. Uh, so he's just going to add a boost. Yeah, he's going to add a boost to the next attacker. So cool. the next PC. And since that was the end of the turn, it is back up to the top. And are we going to continue with Kane leading off, taking the first slot? Yeah, unless anyone else has anything. I mean... I was going to try to see... We've decided. We've decided that we're not going to trade me to them, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I actually think Kane's not going to go first this time because he's holding his ground waiting to see what happens. Okay. Um, so I'll probably let someone else go to see. I, I want to go after that NPC group goes. Ellie, make an, a perception check for me. You have one setback, but it's only an average check. Okay. That's alarming. Success and an I advantage. Got, I got one success and one advantage. So, um, you are, you heard the exchange between Kane and the bounty hunter, the yes. apprentice, uh, and you've got just enough of a view through this kind of like mist. I'm going to say it's only going to last one more, one more cycle here and then it'll sort mm -hmm. of have dissipated. Um, and you can see that they're at a standstill. Mm-hmm. So that that add that information to your processes. So, what do you all want to do? It's your the three of you can decide together who wants to go. Um. Currently, the human. Let let me add this for consideration. Currently, the human and the droid still seem to be like in the fight. Uh, the Chiss and the Aqualish are temporarily at a standstill at a stalemate with Kane. I mean Blin and, and Corvix are still shooting at this uh droid at the car at the cockpit. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't really know what's going on. I mean like I know, but Corvix doesn't know. I'm gonna flip another dark side point and I'm gonna say the fire inside is getting really bad. You guys need to get out of this ship quickly. You have, let's say, two rounds. If you don't get out in two rounds, you guys are going to be in, injured. Yikes. It, it's spreading. And the cargo needs to be pulled out too yeah, quickly. Yeah, I was going to say. Or you need to put Except out the fire. Or Corvix. Or you need to put out the fire. There's there's oh, two yeah. options there, for you. That's, that's a choice. Corvix um, can sit in the smoke all day. That's correct. true. So we're just going to make you do all of the heavy lifting, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the heat is not good for Corvix. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right, so what are you doing? Who's going first? You have a PC turn. Um. Uh, if Kane doesn't want to go first, I, I will go ahead and shoot. I was going to say what? maybe try and convince them to just do all the heavy lifting for us so that they can be the ones in the fire dragging the cargo out, being like, oh, we'll we'll split it. And then kill them as soon as they do. She all offered the work to negotiate. She was kind of trying to negotiate with Chain, 
but they sort of stalemated, I guess. Yeah, no. We said, no, we're not going to give up our best friend, Ellie. So I think Corvus is taking his shot. That's yeah, what I'm Yeah, okay, Corvix, you go. I'm I'm too hesitant. So to, to uh, speak for close us, range. So. Um, there's now a setback. I should have had one last round because of the smoke. It's getting mm-hmm. harder to see in here. Uh, um, you're good to go. I may have missed something. Uh, is there also an advantage from uh, or a boost? There sorry, is a boost. from blend shot. Correct. Nice. Okay, so there let me add that. Okay, added, um, and we shoot. Hey. All right. What up? So with that, what did you get? I got one success and three advantages. Three advantages is dope. You, you didn't get a critical, but you did enough, uh, even with him taking the soak, that takes out the droid. Yeah. So Ooh. one of the... Two minions is down. Um, having disassembled this droid, uh, could I use one of my or two of my advantages to give the human who is still shooting one setback? Is that how that works? Uh, yeah, you spend two advantage ab- to give somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So there's um, this. So you shoot the droid, and there's this loud squeal. Is like. Ee! breaks my heart as it powers down and there's kind of a little bit of a kind of a small explosion as it it basically uh ceases to function as they say um and yes absolutely the human up top is is he can see it so he's like he's he's like um oh no they got v4 i look instinctively <laughs> and uh, uh what my last name <laughs> you have uh, one more what, advantage. What can I do with that one more advantage? Uh, cover strain or pass a boost is most likely. Um, if you have a story element, you can always add something cool or, you know, helpful. Let's Let's say that um the destruction of V4 uh so it set it's a setback to the human who was still ready to fight. But then, even beyond that, it him calling out, "Oh no, they got uh, they got V four is enough to throw the other two assailants off balance. That Kane gets a boost on his next perfect whatever he's gonna do. Let's say Kane is next in that case, because uh, technically you have to have two advantage to specifically pass a boost to someone. Oh, I'm sorry, but narratively, I'm happy with Kane going next because Kane hears what just happened. That's um, just my recommendation. You don't have to do that. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for them to do something still. Well, then just that general, uh, oh, no, they got before is sets the enemies off enough that our next PC go is a boost. If that's how the single the single boost works. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're going to have a setback, and the next PC has a boost. Absolutely. Perfect. And it is another PC turn. So if Kane doesn't want to go, I get to go. Or Blin. unless you want Blin to act, but yes, Blin. Blin doesn't have a shot really. He can't yeah, from no. his position. He because of the steam and the fi- he's starting to freak out about the fire. Yeah. <laughs> um. Honestly, then at that point, I'm gonna see the fire and be like, people over, you know, projectiles and head in there, and just Blin- kind of like. Yeah. Yell to the uh Chiss, the female who seems to just be trying to be in charge and just be like um we can figure out alliances after everyone is brought to safety. Get in here and move those boxes if you want a chance of being our friends and just head in and signal to Corvix of like let's get Blin out. And pick him up, and move. Awesome. I don't know how much of my turn I can do. Give with me. That. I I'm gonna say that's charming. <gasps> hey, a guess charm what? I have a thing about that. I was hoping you would say that. Uh, I have kill with kindness. 
I get to remove a setback per rank of kill with kindness from all charm and leadership checks. This is going to be, it's a little, it's a heated moment. Um, I'm not going to give you any setbacks, but um, it's going to be difficult and I'm going to raise, I'm going to use uh, the last dark side point I've got and give a raise. Well, so I'm using a light side point. Sure. It's set when you're ready. Charm. Charm, yep. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I would like to have three successes and two advantage, please. Spectacular. So the three successes, there are three bounty oh. hunters. You basically have... I didn't even upgrade that. I forgot to hit upgrade. <laughs> what were you supposed to upgrade? Uh, I flipped a light side to upgrade it. Oh, so you normally have three and a mm -hmm. yellow? Is that... Mm -hmm. Uh well why because the yellow gives you the opportunity for a triumph why don't you just roll uh -huh. a single yellow and we'll swap it for two successes good deal oh wait oh. let me oh nope. that's fine it's two advantage well I got two advantage so 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 it's one success four advantage cool um so. You so you convince her. Lit. She she's she's gonna she she'll take her turn at, at the same time essentially, uh, and uh, think about what you want to do with those four advantage. So so she said so she looks over to the Aquilish and up to the human and she says, uh, uh, yeah 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 the girl's got a point. Uh, this is I don't want to die out here. They already took out they already took out Sharnus and V four. Uh, let's cut our losses. I would like to use my three advantage to ignore penalizing environmental effects such as inclement weather, zero gravity, or similar circumstances until the end of my next turn. Sweet. Like smoke and fire. Yes, definitely. Love it. Perfect. And actually, okay, cool. I was going to have Blin call out and say, uh, there's a fire suppressor right there and like kind of point to like a, basically like a fire extinguisher kind of thing. Um, uh, so... Uh, so so the Chiss sa sa looks over the Aqualish and says, um, you know, basically says, uh, okay, we can, we can, yeah, we can negotiate. Um, what's in it for us, though? I huh. gesture to the fire. Not this. <laughs> Your lives. <laughs> I really, I really do picture Corvix saying that with that exact expression <laughs> on his non-existent <laughs> face, just like. Yeah, I love it. That was awesome. Actually, I want to have uh, Corvus roll a charm. Oh, no, not a charm. What's the? Is it intimidation? Is it? What's the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. it's intimidation, right? Um. So there's there charm, is... negotiate, per and not persuasion. Coercion. coercion. That's uh, what I was coercion. trying to think of. Yeah. I want you to roll coercion. coercion. coercion is pretty bad. And uh, yeah. I'm actually going to give you a boost for that awesome line that you just gave. And you get a boost for uh, Ellie passing yeah. on the boost. So, yeah, I was going to say I have uh, another advantage too. So do I need to set the two boosts? Yes. And it's All ready right. to go for you. All right. Hey, one success. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Love it. So here's what I th here's what I would like to happen. You all can object if if that's what you want to do. The Chiss says, "Okay, I can see we're not gonna get anywhere on this. Let's count our losses, uh, friends. We're just gonna walk away." And she's actually starting to back up. The Oculus seems to be taking the hint. The human jumps down from the top of the ship. The, none of them have lowered their blasters, but they're they're sort of doing kind of a strategic retreat. If you let, the, it's like they've realized like if you let them live, that might be in this case the best they can hope for. Uh, I would just like to uh, to go back like five seconds 
and like okay. as the smoke is filling up this oh, cargo yes. bay and filling up the ship, um, you know their their friend just got destroyed. The guy called out that the droid was was down, and then this Aqualish and this Chiss just see like this roiling smoke, and uh, Corvix comes striding out. The smoke like coming off of his chassis <laughs> like a uh, like a Tarkovsky cartoon, like Samurai Jack. He's dragging the litter in one hand and a blaster in the other, and he's just like, your lives. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> That's so good. So the human hops down. I definitely motioned towards the fire when I said, not this, and then he just strode out. <laughs> yes. I said, your so lives. Good. Like, this so perfect. What a great scene. All right, so the human jumps down from the ship, uh, he walks around. He walks quickly around Cain. He said he looks at looks Cain dead in the eye, and he says, "He kind of he kind of like is he gonna fight? He kind of grins and shrugs and says, and he actually kicks the the Ranet. He says, I never really liked him anyway. I'm a little upset about V four. He reaches down. And he picks up the disruptor pistol." And starts backing away. We should keep him. He's our new favorite. <laughs> he didn't like the Ranet either. That means he's good people. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we just letting him... Uh... Cor- Corvix isn't going to take any sort of lead here. He's going to wait for one of the organics. I mean, there, there's a threat right now. Uh, like literally, uh, Blin is like, Corvix, Corvix, please, please, <coughs> it's getting hard to breathe. Yeah, I'm, help. I'm just if we're out of initiative, I'm just gonna grab that fire suppressor. I mean, if you, here's will, what I'm saying, I will saying pull the from, litter like out of the yeah. smoke. What I'm saying from the GM's table here yes. perspective, whatever it is, they will not fi- at this point. They will not fire on you all if you do not fire on them. They're 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 content to just like walk away from this one. I will I will begin walking down the the ramp or or out of the cargo bay, whatever uh, the visual here is with this ship, uh, just out of the smoke uh, with the litter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I so do you want to yell? You're after sliding them. the litter on the ground because. Yeah, like. Basically, Blin's head is down, and I've got the leg end <laughs> up, yes. uh, and I'm just dragging him along one-handed. He's like, ah, it's it would bump him around a little bit, so it'd be disorienting. But I'm yeah. getting him out of the smoke. Yes. Fair enough. I want to call after them as they're backing away. If you value your lives, I don't look familiar, and then I will pick up the litter and help. Right Cortex. on. By the way, don't tell my dad. <laughs> you never <laughs> saw me. I wasn't the Twilight you're looking right? for. So it doesn't take but a few sec. Like they back off, and then it's like at some point they essentially turn and run into the darkness. It, yeah. it doesn't take them long to get up. And so, um, at this point, just for kicks, I want a uh, coordination roll from Kane. <gasps> really? What? what did just Kane give do? me a. You know, I'll tell you what it is for in a second. Okay, I'll do it. Oh come oh, on! God. What's it with you? You had all. It was an average roll. Dude, <laughs> spent, spent a light side point on the coordination roll. Dude, I actually shouldn't even have that boost either. Dude. Oh no. So. Here's what happens. You okay? So you all, <laughs> you all, um, you you very quickly you get Blin out of the smoke, and he's gonna be okay. Next thing is you as quickly as you can pull the six cargo crates out. I was going to uh, say fire suppressant the, and then somebody cargo. put yeah somebody puts out the fire. Uh, at least for now, you think you've so- stopped it. Um, somebody will probably Blin will probably tell you how to power down the ship to try to you know to stop all the electrical sparks and everything from happening. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much there anyway, but there were still some like redundant systems and backup stuff and that kind of thing that were still popping off and causing trouble. Um, you load you load Blin up into the um, cargo bay, secure him. I I I'm just going to guess that Corvix would probably want to ride in the back with him to make sure he's like okay. Yeah. 
There's all kinds of straps and everything like that. If any of you want to use a stim pack, now is the, probably the time to do it. I have 13. Who wants them? I would love a stim pack. Sorry, Corvix. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, we know that Corvix can't. Uh, if only there was a mechanic in the group. If only. Hmm. We'll have to figure out how to get uh, Vosk in for next session. Yeah. Um, so you load up. You get in the hover truck, and you start heading back to Socorro. All right, to sorry, to Vakea. Okay. Yes, yes. You get about halfway back, Kane. You realize you don't have your jacket. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> what? You're you're somewhere in the whole thing. It either it got lost, it got oh, burned up. No. Your jacket's hey, gone, hey, man. You're hey, gonna have to get another cool guy jacket. My obli- th- my obligation was not rolled. Why did <laughs> I lose my jacket? <laughs> but the, the art- cool now now Sick that being me. said, bear with me for a moment. That being said, um, we go back for it, aren't we? No. Yeah, we <laughs> well, absolutely I mean, are going back. Certainly, you could. For it. Just- you know, just replicate a new one. Oh, you can, wrong franchise. You, you'll you'll get enough to get a new one. You get an even cooler, cool giant guy. No, no. but no. this one won't smell like adventure and smoke. <laughs> right. Um. It's okay. I have an idea. What, actually, what's he going to offer to Ellie when space is cold? As Anakin says. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I have an idea. So Don't th- worry, Kane. I got the you. The good thing <laughs> I, I would love to tell you is this: the um, you did recover six crates and Blynn would explain to you that um he was able to negotiate the the deal was only for four crates two armor crates two weapon crates yeah that's the deal he made with Ristal what he says to you is essentially he was able to negotiate for an extra crate of each and his idea was that once he got here he would just you know sell it himself to get make some extra credits because you saved him he's like more than happy to essentially give you those um his hope is that once he's sort of put back together and and patched up he might be able to make it back out to his ship to at least try to salvage some of the ship although it's it's a wreck and he's afraid that other salvagers might end up picking it up beforehand uh, those bounty hunters know it's out there they might come back for it you know who knows we're gonna, come back. we're gonna come back and one of those bounty hunters is gonna be wearing kane's jacket right. <laughs> so um do you want to open the crates to see what's in them or do you want to take now uh i feel like we're Ristal gonna pull a firefly Sif- on Rist- accident Rist- what's that Opening the there's crate, and there's a just a kid in person there. in there. Oh, God, no. Um, so, um, Ristal did say that she needed four crates that were basically not tampered with. So, it might be a good idea to, like, leave not. those four sealed. Yep. Good deal. But you... Okay. Um, how... We know that these crates are supposed to be uh, smuggled weapons and armor. How mm-hmm. confident is the group... That we can fence those uh, goods. But you might should be able we to pop use the crates them. open, or or use them? Um, How like many? Are, are, Go. What's I? Corvix doesn't know what sort of contacts this gang has, uh, but being an equal member of the group uh, and looking for his equal share of the loot, um, he would be asking like, "How confident are you guys that you can actually sell this stuff if we open it up?" I know people. So, what sort of people? Oh, that was Niffer, but I can absolutely say that in character for you. <laughs> well, where do you want to have a... Okay, so let's Probably say you're on the, ship. on the way back. Do you want... Like, what do you want to do with Blynn? Blynn needs... He definitely medical needs attention. to get to a medical center. Uh, We can just not, like put his litter on the front door of a hospital and then knock on the door and drive away. Okay, he's not an orphan. <laughs> he's Yeah, exactly. And you wouldn't get in trouble for bringing him to a medical center. He's also um, conscious. I don't think that he would let us just right. dump him on a hospital step. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, does, essentially, he would a- he's like going to ask you to bring him to a medical center. Do you okay, have I was a primary ask, like, care it does- physician? Like, 
Do do you know which medical center oh, accepts your insurance? I'm gonna go Blin? back. I'm gonna rewind it a little tiny Are you bit. Medicare or <laughs> I'm gonna rewind just a little bit. Um, so, um, he would have asked before you all left the ship. He actually would have asked you to get a couple of personal items, um, some valuables and some you know important <laughs> things for him, uh, like a medallion and some just you know whatever some certain things that he doesn't want to lose. Um, he, so, and so I had to Kane, go find all of that stuff, but my jacket's gone. Yeah, Kane, Kane I'm giving funny. you a hard time. Your 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 jacket's just singed, man. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm like, just giving. Uh, you it's a got hard some time. new flavor you, to it. You freak out the entire With- way back to Ellie in the cab, just being like, "I've lost my jacket. I cannot believe this." And when we go to unload it, it was like under one of the crates. <laughs> totally. like, it, exactly. Um, Threw exactly. a baby fit so the whole for, way back. And yeah. now for it's just got a some smidge like, of flavor cool with uh, marks on it. Sorry, we're all talking over Perfect. each other. What, what was that? That's all right. With with Blin asking us to get these personal effects from him, Corvix will go like Corvix being smoke proof will go back into the ship sure. and get these things. He will also get Kane's jacket and not tell Kane about it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Perfect. He'll put it. He'll put it in the back somewhere, like under one of the cargo crates or something. That's why you never Excellent. trust a droid. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So you get back to town. You um, so you, you want to orphan Blin. You're gonna bring Blin to a um. He actually um, before you drop him off, he's like again, he's pretty grateful at this point, and he has more or less told you, you know, y'all have essentially have a friend for life. You know, if he if his you know once he gets back on his feet and he's he gets a new ship you know whatever if he can help you out he's he'll you know he'll he'll make it right by you all aside from just giving you the extra crates uh you know weapon crates uh he does uh he probably would exchange con- you know transponder you already sort of had mm-hmm. his transponder but he would like he would exchange like com he's like he would ask you like how do how do i how do i find you cuz he doesn't know anything about your ship or anything like that so he's he would ask you uh, like how do I how do I get a hold of you all after this after I'm I'm back on the mend? Uh Corvix specifically will exchange like personal uh like Holonet address. So, yeah, I don't know what the Star Wars equivalent to email is, Tom but number. uh com number, his, yeah. his Holonet, his com number, whatever, and he will he'll tell him like uh you know, as you get better, keep in touch. Um let me know how your recovery goes. Fantastic. And he, he uh you all uh you all know you know all know um Ristal, I guess mm-hmm. we could always contact. Yeah. Great. You familiar with fur talks? Oh yes. All right. I guess I'll see you in fur talks sometime. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I really appreciate. I mean, let's face it. Without y'all, <laughs> I'd be dead right now. And then at that point, the orderlies kind of take him down the hall on a on a hover stretcher, and uh, he goes off to get medic like real medical attention. Um, you get back. What do you want to do? So you have the crates in the truck. Um, you need to connect with Ristal. You yeah. probably want to open the crates at some point. Um, yeah. And you need to I get the truck should... back to Drifter. I think we should. Drop the four off to Rastal, and then drop R2 off, return the truck, and then go look at our crates. Does that sound good? Sounds okay. good. Yes. Okay. Okay, so you, you drop... It doesn't really matter which order. You drop two off at yeah. the ship, let's call it. Mm-hmm. Then, you, then you're then you going to connect with Rastal and see yep. where she wants you all to bring the other four? Yes. Okay, yes. fantastic. Um, Kane is not allowed to interact with her. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, at this point, it's talk. pretty late in the evening. Mm-hmm. So when you contact her, um, she's like, she comes up on the comm. She's like, oh, how did everything go? Perfectly fine. Your pilot's alive. Not that you probably actually care, but he's on his way to the med center. You have four crates waiting for you. Where would you like them? You you hear a sigh, um, and uh, she says, "That's great news, Ellie. Thank you. I actually do care for Blin. 
Um, but we just met, and, well, I apologize. I was probably a little guarded at first. Uh, I'm going to give you some coordinates. You can drop them off at this warehouse and blah, blah, you know, here, go, go here. Perfectly there'll fine. be, there'll be, uh, men waiting for you. And, uh, once they've received, once I get word, they've received the shipment, I will, uh, transfer the credits to you. Perfect. You got all four then. Yes, we did. Any certain passphrase that we need to make sure we got the right men or are you just trusting any warehouse? You are sharp. It's not my first job. She says, um, uh, hold that thought. I, uh, let's see. I didn't have anything in, in mind, so let me, uh. Yeah, just say it happens. Uh, it happens. Cool. She gives you a, <laughs> she gives you a word. <laughs> so you, uh, we say the right passphrase, and they say the right response, and yeah, okay. I'm trying to think of the name of the freaking band that she played with, uh, in Jabba's, Jabba's Hut. Snice or in, Noodles. Snice Noodles, thank you. She gives you that name, and uh, she says, yeah, tell, tell them. Max Rebo and yeah, uh, whatever Rebo's band. So Max Rebo the, band. The, the yeah, nice Noodles is that's the, uh, think of. Max the Rebo, lady, yeah. the snouted lady Tell Max alien. Rebo sent you or something right. like that. So, uh, so you get the okay. So you guys, um, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to role play all this little bit out. So you get the word, you take it to them. It's a little tense, you know. There's some tension. It's a little awkward or whatever. But it, it, you almost get the sense of like. It feels, even though you're sort of on edge from like the adrenaline kind of pouring off and, and the whole events of the evening, uh, you know, you all almost died, you, but you know, you made it out again uh, successfully and probably more successfully than you might have even ima uh, imagined because now you have another ally uh, in actually two new allies, probably one in Ristal and one in Blinn. So, um, so there's there's a little bit of a mixture of like all of these different emotions and at the same time when you do make the drop off it feels very mundane it's almost like you're just making a shipment you know you're dropping off a shipment that's all it doesn't like there's nothing weird there's not like armed guards or any of this kind of thing it's just a very like straightforward very business like um and that sort of thing um and uh so you make the delivery uh, and then what do you want to do? You head back to the ship? Is that what I heard? Let's check out our hall. Right. Oh, wait. We need to return the, the, the Jeep, whatever it is. Did we get uh, paid correctly? You probably know that uh, Drifter wouldn't be there yeah. most okay. likely. Or if he is, he's probably sleeping or something. You That's know what I mean? Like, we'll return the morning the should be Could fine. You? He basically said, you know, okay, bring cool. it around in the morning. Just um, and don't there would get be. Hit with those late fees, man. Right, there would be a safe place to cool. um, park. Park it, yeah. So, all right. So when you go back to the ship and open the crates, um, they explode. No. <laughs> um, End of story. <laughs> right. Uh, I will say that um, Kane. Uh, sorry, Kane. Zarko and Vosk are probably in the ship, um, but they're probably sleeping because it's like. At this point, it's like probably two in the morning ish. Oh, yeah. It's like way late at this point. Um, so they're probably on the ship, but they're in fact, let's say they are on the ship and you can tell that they've they've seen the message from Shay and uh, Kai. Cool. And um, they and so you get back to the ship and when you open the crates, you find in the armor crate, there were three items. Okay, there's a, a brand new set of armored clothing. There is a Carflow thin suit. And there is a Corellian Arms storm charge suit. Hell yeah. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Now, you guys Dibs can the either one. decide how to use them or you can try to sell them. They're they're not hor tremendously valuable, but they're kind of valuable. Uh, I got links, um, so sweet. let me... Uh, let me post some links for you here uh that's Before probably the we, first uh, i'm gonna post them in chat in case anybody in twitch wants to yay. check it out too uh the storm that's the storm charge armor storm charge. Char storage charge storm 
charge suit, rather. Before we uh, uh, dig too much into these crates, um, can Corvix Oak. will try to uh, shuffle Kane towards the medical bay uh, because he did receive some damage. I love it. And Beautiful. He, so you get back, you you kind he's of- He's going to try uh, to sort of mother him. <laughs> love it. You unload the cargo crates on the two crates onto the second sunrise. You secure the truck. It's basically just in the same berth. Nobody would care. Um, and so, uh, and then you go on the ship, and basically, Kane, uh, Corvix is like, you go, you're going maybe with Ellie towards the cargo bay where you're going to put the crates and you want to like go open them or something. And Corvix grabs you to. Corvix will grab his arm and be like, ah, ah, worry about your toys later. First, let's take care of these wounds before infection sets in. But what? In- infection? Everything's fine. I'm fine. That's what nothing everyone more than says a f- before they die. It's nothing more, than, nothing more than a flesh wound. It may be but a scratch, but it best to take care of it now before it becomes something worse. Uh, Ellie, Ellie, don't, don't touch... Don't touch that armor. I want I want that intact when I get back. I already have my hands halfway through <laughs> into the Corellian arm storm charts. So like, <laughs> Cor- Corvix will shoo- start shooing him up the ramp. I'm going, I'm going. Well, Ellie's injured too, which is kind of funny to me. I got a stim pack. Oh. I only have one she- she- Oh, okay, right on. It's okay. Absolutely try and mother us both so that we can bond in the hospital. It's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. In that case, uh, as he's shooing Kane up, he'd be like, ah, uh-uh, you too. I just like drop Excellent. the suit back in and just follow. So at and this point, Cor- you- Corvix will put a band aid on both of their knees and give it a little robot kiss. <laughs> so give me a that roll. must be so disconcerting with your empty face hole. <laughs> how nothing much, there. All right. How much is Ka- how much is Kane injured? Uh, I think he's got six, six. So less than half. Uh, yes. If I remember right, less than half is a, an average check or an easy check. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I, without whipping open my rule book, I think it's average, and then half or over is hard. That's what I'm remembering too. That's what I thought. Okay, and that's what I said. So that's what we're gonna do. So it's it's set for you. Go ahead and make your Rolling medicine. medicine. Check. Kapow. Boom! Look at that. That triumph. That triumph is the kiss. Yeah. <laughs> that so, kiss. so that would be a, a critical injury if Kane had one. However, you did do four success, which means you heal four wounds. Um, and let's say with uh, the triumph, you would heal any strain you have too, I guess. Oh my God. Thank you. With, Cause that's where I needed it. <laughs> with the, with the triumph, like, uh, in in sort of the flavor of the strain, like something that Kane didn't even really know was wrong with him. Yes, Corvix like pops that yes. pops that bone back into place or something, oh. or or <laughs> massages that That's... muscle just right. That he's like, oh, I didn't even. Oh yeah, that feels way better. I wasn't even aware. <laughs> Kane, huh. Kane, you're 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 begrudgingly coming to realize that Corvix actually knows what he's doing. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, Corvix. Uh, yes. Thanks. That was yes. a that was a well timed shot you had out there. Well, I'm probably not as handy with the blaster, but I do like to think that I can be helpful in a wide range of situations. And he'll pat him a little hard on his on his wound. <laughs> ah, and my my shoulder feels a lot better too. That's uh. How would you uh how would you feel about continuing on as part of the second sunrise crew? Um as he he steps over to kind of start working on Ellie's uh wound, he is sort of quiet for a moment like he's thinking about it and he goes, "I I may have to uh juggle some of my other busy schedule around and uh you know, let some contacts know, but I think that this venture went rather well. Um, rather well is not something that I'm used to as of late, so 
I think that it would be well profitable for uh, everyone involved. It's it's like he's like really trying to parse his words to not seem too eager to jump on. <laughs> nice. But like you could tell that he's trying not to seem too eager to jump on. And uh Kane will Kane will reach out his hand uh as as to uh offer a handshake. A good punch. He will shake that hand. Welcome what does to the Ellie team. Think about this little exchange. Oh hey, by the way, I found this under the crate and I just pull out Kane's jacket. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's been here the whole time. <sighs> and he just like begrudgingly takes it and walks off <laughs> over his shoulder. <laughs> I just, As Kane walks off, Corvix will I say, I just kind uh, of look back at Corvix and I just smile. <laughs> He's not as tough as he'd like us to think, is he? <laughs> Ellie shakes her head. <laughs> All right, so then you uh, head over into the cargo bay where the crates are. Uh, Yay, you open we the still get more presents. You, you open the armor crate first, and as I said, yes. you find a suit, brand new suit of armored clothing, mm-hmm. a a carflow thin suit, which I tagged in yep. the Twitch chat there. If you want to sh- take yep, a look it's at that, all on the list now. And the Corellian arms storm charge suit. Uh, when you open the weapons crate, disintegrator. There weapons are three are weapons. Us. There okay. is a Heavy blaster pistol. There is a Soros Sub X30 precision blast pistol. And there is an EE3 blaster carbine. Ooh. And if I remember right, I believe the EE3 might have been the same one that Boba Fett uses, but I'm not positive Ooh. about that. Cool. But All I'm right. going to link those into awesome. the chat as well. Uh, so that's what you get in the carts you all so as evening falls it's getting late um, Corvix um, I would imagine they would suggest you can for the moment for the time being uh, you can power down or whatever you want to do sleep whatever you decide your routine is in the medical bay there are beds there uh, or mm-hmm. there is a bed there, I should say, and they've done that in the past. Ellie and Kane go back to their room. Kane, you notice as you get to yours that the door is not opening and closed. It's currently closed. Um, <gasps> and you go to key the automatic, like the, you know, you expect that it's going to open, slide open, and it doesn't. Oh. But you, you, you realize like after a moment that like manually for now you can at least open and close it manually. Uh, it just bottom. doesn't do the automatic thing that it, Vosk still hasn't quite fixed it yet. <laughs> and, but uh, at least it's not doing that. And constantly. Ellie and Corvix just hear like a clang and then a yell from Kane as he like hits the thing and he's like trying to get it to open. And then just kind of forces it open. <laughs> nice. Did he use a dark side point for that? <laughs> <laughs> so with uh, with some tasks yet to be resolved in the morning, you need to get paid, and you need to return the hover truck. Um, the crew, you know, silence falls uh, inside the hull and inside the various rooms of the second sunrise. And that is where we're going to end the evening tonight, friends. Thank you for an amazing game. Once again, uh, we will, uh, do a quick around the table of like who we are, where you can find us before I do that. I do want to say thank you to roll 20 for sponsoring the show indirectly, directly, indirectly, but thank you for being cool. Roll 20. We love your dice roller and your character sheets. It makes our lives so much better and so much easier. And Again, check out the uh, all of the amazing podcasters that are part of the Star Wars 
RPG Podcasting Alliance. And uh, hey, I'm Gregory. I'm one in twenty D and D. You can find me online doing all kinds of groovy stuff. You uh, will definitely see me uh, tomorrow night if you come by the Dice Tyrants Twitch. And uh, we're playing Aether and Steamworks, which is a super cool Woo-hoo. game. I play this fun tinker and love that. Um, a week from tonight, you can find Nifer and myself playing an amazing Curse of Strahd game with an incredible GM and an all-star cast. It is absolutely one of the best, if not the best, D&D game I have played. And uh, we are having a really good time. That is at... Uh, Speak for <laughs> yourself. I'm in an angsty place right now. <laughs> I mean, yes. Very good. I, <laughs> I'm with you on that. It's it's uncomfortable, but in, I think, a good way, a at good least way. as a player. It is juicy. It is yeah, juicy did, RP. Did you get your baby back? Uh, shush, you. Shush. <laughs> we don't talk about that yet. <laughs> but so no is the co- answer. Right? Uh, but no, come check us out. That is with uh, <laughs> Last HP Hero. And um, that's me. So, uh, once again, Corvix, who you are, where you can find, we can find you. So, um, again, I'm Kevin. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Son of Clark. Uh, and much like Corvix, uh, I am very excited to be part of this group in the, you know, going forward in the future. We've got our first mission under our. Uh, collective belts together and i'm excited to see what the next one is spectacular go ahead right. Ellie. i am niffer niff and i like gregory said i'm on last hp hero as a cool artificer who is still missing her baby very much in strad and that is very super duper fun every other wednesdays and then on Mondays, uh, new episodes of the Not Quite Heroes podcast drop, where I play a couple of different characters because we're doing a couple of different paths and different game uh, systems. So if you're looking for new systems to try, give us a listen and stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Kane, who are you? Where can we find you? Hey, I'm Nick. You can find me on Twitter at Lizard King Nick. Um, and then I, uh, in two weeks, uh, this time on Wednesdays, you can find me on Tabletop Galaxy. Uh, I play Kane McAllister. Uh, <laughs> super fun, lots of shooting. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, if you <laughs> like this show, you're definitely going to like that one. And he might have uh, just so gotten a out. cool guy jacket upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we very clearly did not address during the health check the whole ripped shirt scar on chest. So, <laughs> Kane, we, we, we determined uh, two sessions ago, I think, that Kane has many, many scars. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been around the block, but none on the face. I mean, <laughs> we, we could uh, rationalize that maybe uh, Corvix's boo boo kiss was right on Chain's, uh, man- Kane's manly chest. Oh, my. <laughs> Go for the pet kiss, really? <laughs> Gonna have so a right love here triangle in the middle, you know. The... <laughs> <laughs> gonna have a lump triangle on the second sunrise, I guess. All right, friends. We we keep making jokes us. of Ellie and Corvix, but really it's Corvix and Kane. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Por que no los dos? <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, thank you for joining us. We will see you next time out there in the galaxy, far, far away. <laughs> <laughs>